Okay, welcome to our first and hopefully only virtual meeting, um, everybody. So I'd like to call on Jackie, please, to do our opening prayer, please. Thank you. All right. Morning, everyone. Um, he karakia timatanga de, um, me te kaupapa. Uh, he honora he karoria ki te atua. He maunga rongo ki te whenua. He whakaro pai ki ngā tangata katoa. Hanga e te atua he ngākau hau. Ki roto ki tēnā, ki tēnā o mā. Ka katongia tō wairua tapu. He awhina, he tohu tohu i a mātou. He ako hoki mahi Honour and glory to God and peace on earth and goodwill to all people. Lord, um, develop a new heart inside all of us. Instill in us your sacred spirit. Help us, guide us in all things we need to learn today. Amen. Thank you so much, Jackie. Okay, we'll go on to item number two, and that's apologies and conflicts of interest. So I have one apology, and that's Laurie Atkinson. Is I'll move that. May I have a seconder, please? Second. Jackie, thank you. All in favour? Aye. And um, the one thing I didn't ask was, was there any conflicts of interest? Uh, only myself for the Rarawa Rugby Club application for funding for the junior, for the J and B. Okay, um, thank you. My child plays in the team. So, right. yeah. Thank you. So I'll move that and um, who would like to second that, please? I'll second Thank, that. Thank you, Darren. Jackie Brown, not Jackie Brown. Brown, yeah. Brown. Thank you. So Kim, there's no dip, no public forum in this particular um, meeting, yes. is there? Correct. Okay, so we'll go straight to the speakers um, for the funding application. So who's first, please? Uh, the first person on the list is Bart Vandermeer, representing Volunteer Northland. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Bart. You're welcome, welcome to speak. Yes, good morning. I found the unmute button. Um, um, uh, as you uh, hopefully all know, um, uh, we have been uh, um, supported by the community uh, board, the Kaitaia community board, the community board, right now. And, um, Steady, um, not as fast as we'd hoped uh, in uh, the area, um, but um, you probably have seen a few of our billboards uh, uh, around the area, um, in the area in the last uh, couple of months actually, because they were supposed to be there for a few weeks, but then the whole lockdown started. Um, so we, we um, are still... Uh, as I say, a growing number of organizations uh, in the far north. It's uh, been hard, uh, 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 but uh, also the number of referrals, um, uh, I thought, um, uh, was a bit uh, behind, but uh, it's uh, because of the smaller co communities, a lot of people know each other. Uh, we, for instance, advertised for a few options at uh, Switzer Home, and it didn't see any And at some point, uh, we got a call from Switzer Home, could you please take it down, because we have five people now. So that is what happening, what's happening in the, those smaller communities. We do advertise widely, uh, but uh, some, quite a lot of potential volunteers just bypass us, because it's not a secret where those opportunities are. Um, so it is working um, uh, pretty good, I think. Uh, another one uh, we worked uh, uh, on was the uh, governance bites, uh, which we were live streaming out of Whangarei. 
the last few had interest. Um, and that was also, um, there was a group in uh, Dardeville and in Kartaya um, uh, at the hour actually, um, where, who joined uh, as a group watching those uh, live stream sessions. Uh, they're all uh, on demand as well. So this is actually uh, funded by uh, Foundation North and the Kaipara and Fangarai district. Um, so all about governance, 90 minute uh, bites, um, 14 in total, so it's running until November. Um, yeah, so I, I think um, uh, the support has been great uh, from uh, uh, all three community boards in the last few years, and I, I hope uh, it will continue. Um, um, was, um, yes, it's one of the few uh, options we have uh, as uh, Fontaine Northland, the councils, um, the minister of the voluntary sector, and a few uh, uh, Am I still okay? Because uh, I hear a lot of. Ah, okay, yes, it's settled down a bit. Um, so I assume you, have, you all have seen uh, the application and our uh, strategic plan. So one of the things we would like to do very much uh, in the next year or so is uh, have a 100% using uh, a lot of volunteers, uh, specifically also from the far north, um, hoping uh, that we um, uh, have some more um, organizations who are uh, focusing on Maori or are Maori led um, uh, to yeah, make Fontaine uh, uh, Northland more relevant uh, uh, in some areas where we think we uh, could still grow. It, and we hope also to um, sort of open up um, organizations that are Maori led uh, for. Uh, people outside those uh, circles, which is working relatively well, uh, for instance, at the Waitangi uh, Treaty Grounds, uh, but also in a few marais in Whangarei, uh, but uh, that could be improved. And we think uh, that uh, having a bilingual uh, website uh, would make a big difference. So that's one of the things we will be focusing on in the next uh, 12 months. Um, are there any other questions? Because I'm not sure how much time I have. Uh, no, you've answered all my questions. So, Madam Chair, by you. Um, yes, yeah, so... Um, so there's no questions for me. Adele, Adele you're on mute. Ah, okay. All right. So, uh, just just give us one one thing too that um, possibly that high was highlighted over the COVID nineteen period for you, in in Tehiku. Yes, um, we. Uh, we're an essential service reporting back to civil defence. So we were asked to mobilise uh, volunteers, mainly, well, preferably from organisations we already work with that have uh, uh, vetted volunteers. So, uh, but also uh, uh, spontaneous volunteers. And so we we we. Uh, there were about 150 spontaneous volunteers that registered with us, but we uh, used a few organizations. One was um, Te Ora Ho in Whangarei, in Tehiku it was Far North Reap, um, in Dargaville it was uh, Te Ora, uh, uh, Learning. Um, and we had a request form on our website, so people could fill out a request form and we would connect them to volunteers. And that was mainly about essential services, so for people in isolation who could not uh, do their shopping themselves. Now, as you all know, in, in, uh, in the far north, the iwis were fantastic, so we only had uh, uh, 
a few options, a few questions, requests from uh, Kaitaya and uh, uh, two in Manganui, which we actually, the one in Manganui, we actually uh, connected them to um, one of the posties who uh, had put a hand up as a spontaneous volunteers. So we had many more requests in uh, Kaikoe and Kirikiri, uh, but also uh, Moriwa, uh, Kawakawa, uh, yeah, so all over. Um, the, so the, the positive thing was, the, the big thing, I, uh, success was, we connected them to people, uh, volunteer very close to where they lived. And some only like, like 100 meters away. Uh, so we were matching those requests with with volunteers who had put a hand up, um, but in uh, 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 mainly Kaitaya, uh, most people um, um, were organised uh, pretty quickly. I think um, so. We only had a few requests. So there could be uh, one of them was uh, an elderly woman, um, uh, and the antenna of her TV uh, was sort of broken or whatever. Uh, so she was in isolation and she, she um, the TV was the only communication she had. She didn't have internet. Um, so that was a request that came to us, um, but it was sort of fixed within a few hours uh, because people started calling each other in Kaitaya. So, so we didn't have to do much uh, on that one. Um, but like in, in Moriwa, who, who was questions like, um, uh, um, I need to replace a gas bottle. Um, yeah, so it was a little bit like the student frontier army, because uh, these were not uh, people who could not pay for it, but they could not go shopping themselves. And, and uh, uh, quite a few of them, um, uh, most were actually over 80, uh, no online banking, so we also had some um, procedures for transferring money and um, so that was a bit tricky. That was also the reason why we wanted vetted volunteers to the postie in um, uh, Manganui that worked fine, of course. So we actually have been very busy because in the, in the first few weeks, uh, yeah, we, the, uh, we had to set up those guidelines. Uh, we had to uh, set up that form on our uh, website. Um, we also have been very lucky with um, the a few Facebook groups in uh, from Kirikiri all the way to, to uh, Kaitaya. Um, that the communication using those Facebook groups uh, worked really well. So you might know Katie uh, Pullum in Kirikiri, who's um, uh, the administrator for a number of those Facebook groups. And she reached like 20,000 people, I think. You're on, on mute, uh, Adele. Yes, thank, thank you so much, Bart. That's, um, that's fantastic. So um, any further questions from the board, please? No. Okay, thank you. So, Catherine, who is our next person, please? Oh. Can I kind of say something? Just yes. fabulous, but by the way, I just think uh, what you're doing is amazing. Really, really, I've seen your posts around the place, and um, I just want to, from yeah, I've, I've thought, gosh, it's uh, it's good to see it being coordinated after many years of um, across the region, rather than just local relying on it locally. It gives people that opportunity who wouldn't know how to get access into volunteering to give them that chance. So, congratulations on, on the work that you're doing. Okay, yeah, thank, you. thank you. Cheers. And John Haynes should now be online, hopefully. John? John's here, but he doesn't have a video, so you'll have to just <laughs> rely on my voice. That's okay. all right. Well, welcome, John. The floor is yours. Thank you. Thanks, Adele. So I'm gathering that you want me to speak on this application we have for some funding for to build some steps in running yes. company. Yes, please, and it's on page 62 for the board's reference. Okay, so um, we've had the friends. I'll just give you a little background on this this group. I've been the chair for it's coming up four years now, but um, the organization was established by a woman named Alison Staines in 2006, 
she didn't even live in our area. She had a batch in Cooper's Beach, just below where I live. And she'd been involved with Tafara Nui, which is that beautiful peninsula that has been made predator free um, in uh, 2005, I think. They went predator free. It's that's just on the coast from Warkworth. I know I'm diverting here a little bit, but it's a bit of background information. And within three months of putting a fence in that that kept the predators out, they had bellbirds arrive from Tiri Tiri Matangi. Since that time, they've reintroduced um, lots of other um, native species that were not um, there and had been locally extinct for a long time, such as tieke or saddleback, and um, even taheki. Takahe, which is you know a very rare bird that's like a giant pukeko. Used to be all over the country, but they disappeared through. Um, we won't go into that. Anyways, what we have in our case is that she had that background experience, and she looked at Rangi Kapiti and saw that the this bush reserve, which if, if you can picture it, is the peninsula that separates the Monganui Harbor from Cooper's Beach, and roughly 33 hectares, mostly covered in bush, but the paw, of course, sticks above that. We're not responsible for that. We're only responsible, that's that's an historic site that um, Iwi would be more responsible for. We work in conjunction with DOC and local Iwi, Monganui School, lots of different um, other voluntary organizations. And so she started the process by getting contract sprayers in to spray asparagus scandens, which is an incredibly invasive weed that grows in shade. So if you walk on the Kiri Kiri Waterfall Track, the Rainbow Falls Track, you'll see it started to take over there. It didn't used to be there when we lived in Kiri Kiri 20 years ago. Um, it's a really difficult weed to deal with. Most weeds live where you have light, and this lives quite comfortably in the shade. So she did that for many, many years. Since then, um, we've got more of a local base, and we are doing um, very much more a sensitive approach to the to weeding because what happens is with contract spraying you lose you don't just lose asparagus scandens you lose the entire understory and which means the forest becomes um, a bunch of tea tree and not much else it's kind of dead to my to my feeling so our job has been um, I'm going to get to the steps in a moment our job has been to it's sort of four pronged um, so we've got trapping going on and we if you look at the I think I gave you a statement of our receipts and payments and we got funding from Foundation North to the tune of $10,795 um, this last year. And that's a big part of that's going towards having traps at 50 meter spacings around the reserve. So instead of putting in a predator proof fence like they did at Toph or Nui, where you can get pretty close to predator free status if you do the job with trapping. And that's our mission right now. So with in conjunction with Jaden Lewis from Doc and the Monganui school kids, they did a monitoring devices around the reserve to see what the status of, you know, those little tubes that you have ink pads on. And if a, if a rat comes along or a mouse, you can tell who's been there. And they do this on the islands in, in, in Ipipiri in, in Eastern Bay of Islands to ensure that you don't get re-incursions. And then since then, we've been trapping. We were already trapping, but this is just up the scale. Um, another aspect that we're doing is planting trees. Um, so we've planted about 4,500 in the last three years, and we've got another 1,500 to go in this year. And believe me, when I'm not at work here at the library, I'm kind of thinking and planting trees right now. And we'll be doing our first planting day on this coming Sunday. Yeah, it's been pretty full on. So another aspect of the work is educational, and that I mentioned Monganui School. We've had two full planting days with them in the last three years where every child in the school plants a tree. It's a very rewarding exercise. We've worked with um, the youth from Natikahu Youth Services. That was really wonderful last year, and they've, they've been back in touch with me voluntarily and said we want to be involved, so they'll be doing some planting with us again this year. Um, we have all ages involved. We've got a volunteer who's 88, and we've got children who are three and four, you know, homeschoolers, school children, you name it. So that's one aspect, and then another aspect that we're really – keen on, and I've been pretty keen on it from the beginning because I, um, if you don't know me, I organize a weekly tramping group. We go out on Wednesdays if it's not lockdown or level two. Um, and so I'm pretty keen on walking and I see the value and merit of it for local communities and for visitors. So in the last, there was one track in the reserve and that was put in by Doc in the 70s. It was kind of like a, goes between Mill Bay Road 
and Paw Road going up to Rungi Cap and Paw. It was basically a fire um, road that was put in, so it's not a really good track, but we've been upgrading that steadily, and Doc supported us on that last year with some gravel. Um, Allison was encouraged in this work that she was doing with all this spraying to put in a, another track, that, and that was done, I'm going to say about, I don't know if you remember, Cheryl, it was probably six or seven years ago, and we have been steadily upgrading that, putting in where it was steep, trying to go with switchbacks, and we've got to the point where we've improved it as far as we can with the with the skill level of volunteers. So we've been using spades and and we've got a lot of gravel put in last year and the track is at a way better standard than it was. And the beauty of that is this, um, and I it was really noticeable during lockdown when I was working from home and I would go out seven in the morning every day and be back at, ready at my desk in the house to start work at eight and I'd do a tour through the reserve. And it takes about an hour to do the, the whole loop, which is a pretty impressive thing to have right in the middle of a semi-urban coastal community. I saw new people all the time. It's that the tracks are being used way more than they used to be. Part of it's the beautification of the planting, and definitely a big part of it is making the track to a standard that is safer. And so we're at this point now where in the summer, the, the track that we've asked for funding on, we call it the loop track for want of a better term. I'm sure we'll come up with a better name in due course. Um, it's safe enough in the summer when it's dry. When it gets wet like right now, I was in there yesterday, it's slippery and muddy in spots. So those steepest spots that we've diverted around to the best that we could, they need some steps. And so what we've done is approached, approached several builders to see if I could get someone to help us. Glenn Bradbury's worked in the past with Doc. Glenn attempted to come back to us, but he didn't get there on time. Um, another person put me on to a local builder, and that's the, the particular quote, the estimate that we have. He lives just a block from the entrance to the track we're working on, so he uses it with his children. He understands the value of it. So my goal all along, or our goal as a group, has been to bring these tracks to a standard where anyone, aside from someone who's um, restricted to a wheelchair, could use the tracks at any time of the year in any weather conditions. And I believe when these steps are put in, that track will be up to that standard. And like, as I said, it's being used by lots of people now without proper steps, just with a few that I've sort of dug in. Um, but they get rounded and muddy, et cetera, and you, know, you have to grab onto stuff to get up them. So um, Anthony, who put together um, the, I think it's a really fair um, proposal for how much it's going to cost. He went through the entire dock standards. I don't wish upon any of you to have to do that. It's about 250 pages long. He said he's a qualified builder and he had to read more for building a few steps than he would to build a house. Um, so he he would definitely be doing them to the standards that DOC requests. Um, so that's it, basically. That's where we're at. It's, it's a, hand, a handful of steps, but it, it would be um, it would be at a, a a level that would allow not just the number of people we're seeing use this, the tracks now, but more in the future, local and visitors. I even ran into people who I'd never seen before that just arrived, and they said, oh, yeah, this is online. We can find this. Like, obviously, people put stuff on where the tracks are. I missed mean, tracks that didn't even exist a few years ago. So that's quite satisfying. I'm open to questions. Thank you so much, John. Um, I see Jackie's got her hand up, so um, wel welcome um, to comment here, please, Jackie, and ask questions. Thank um, you. Yeah. Um, hello, John. Yeah, it's awesome work that you're doing. Um, just the question I have is that, um, does Doc not already have plans made for that track? This, um, this, I'm just, yeah, yeah. That's a really valid question, Jackie. Um, and I'll, I'll tell you this, the conversations that I've had in the past with Doc on this, um, in particular with um, well, Heine is their track specialist, and but it's not just Heine. Mm -hmm. it's, um, the track that we put in is in a Doc reserve, right? That makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, so you think, well, Doc will do that. And the track that I mentioned, that first one that, that was put in in the 70s, they call that their track. And so I've been kind of pushing them for some years now um, to, to help us to upgrade these 
tracks. And they call that their track. They call this our track because they didn't put it in. We did. I don't quite understand that because it's on a dock reserve, but mm -hmm. that's how the conversation has gone. Um, another thing about this is many years ago before um, we even got to the point of me putting in these divert, like kind of putting switchbacks to, to alleviate some of the steepness, um, we had Alan McRae, who at the time mm -hmm. worked at Dock. He's since retired. Um, but Alan was their specialist um, in terms of archaeology. So he confirmed that this was a place that would be safe for us to work um, and to, to dig in a few steps because it's a way down from the reserve. And a big part of the track was put in as a road. You can tell when you walk it, it's even got mm -hmm. like a little, a little ditch on the side. Um, so it's already been worked a lot. We're not doing anything that would be a danger there. So yes, I know. I understand. I, I would love to see Doc do more here. Um, yeah. But I, I, um, and they, yeah, just they just haven't come to the party on this yet, really. Yeah, I, I just understood. Um, yeah, from just a very personal thing. Um, um, yeah, I uh, married the former track guy. <laughs> so, uh, but he's left there now. But uh, yeah, yeah. So he was saying there is some. There should be some plans there for. Um, you know, that's already written up. And um, so maybe just ask them if they do have any existing plans he says because he was involved in writing them my husband was so uh yeah yeah when I did have, he yeah. jackie did he walk the track because jamie came out with a track specialist yeah uh, this is this is jamie um from doc yeah and i wasn't there at the time i was at work but he he went over the was that your husband no 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 he finished there about um eight years nine years oh. ago and he but he had written <laughs> done all the plans way before that so goodness knows where they are now but uh yeah yeah no this it's, it's awesome what you're doing though but it does i do wonder about where is doc's responsibility in this it's, well i think it's again it is a valid question and yeah. um i i have to say that the default question answer that i've had to a lot of things is no um it's not really the answer i want to hear i'm a bit persistent i'm Good. um i don't kind of give up very easily but um, that's not the answer that I want to hear. By the way, that, that when your husband was the track specialist, he wouldn't have seen this track because it didn't exist then. Um, oh, cool. That's, put it in yes, then. So what it does is it, yeah, go ahead, John. Yeah, I'd like to ask John a question, Adele. <laughs> Are you there? You're on, you're on Cheryl here, actually Adele, had I'm, a, I'm here. Yeah, hi. Sorry. Carry on, John. Hi, hi, John. Um, I like the concept how you've had the, the schools involved, and I just wonder whether it, it might take a bit of coordinating. But let's say you get to the stage of um, getting the stairs built, it'd be excellent if I don't know whether they, they could um, have a couple of of the old, older students that are looking at being involved in construction or something and actually um, go along with the builder and learn a bit, maybe. I, I, I know it could be a nightmare to sort of coordinate, but you never know. It could be something that could be done as well. Just a thought. I think it's a really good suggestion, John. I'll, I'll give you another little bit of background. Um, since I've been involved, I've, I've had a, a lot to do with the school. And if you I'll backtrack even slightly more, some years ago, one of the people in our tramping group who lives in Manganui and walks her dogs every day talked about the penguins crossing the road. You might have, um, that's between the police station and the fish and chip shop. And so that was when I approached council um, as, a, as a resident rather than a person who works for council to um, envision putting up penguin signs. And they've been up there ever since. We've had one torn down three times until we put a steel pole on it, but it's there. And that has protected penguins from, cro they cross the road and they come in after they've been out at, in Doubtless Bay for the day they do cross the road and go up into that steep bank on the other side where the buses sometimes park. And they were getting hit by cars from time to time and, um, and, and had dogs give them a hard time. So what, what happened out of that was because that happened, um, the school got, in, got in touch with me and said, can we build penguin houses? And so and this is the kind of project that they've been involved with. They have since that time built, I don't know how many, I'm guessing 30 penguin boxes that are installed around the area including across the harbor in Butler Point and then along the harbor's edge right through to Talmadu Maru, which is the other end of Cooper's Beach and in our reserve. And the satisfying thing is there's a little bay called what we call Karaka Bay. It's because there's a lot of Karaka trees on the, on the edge of it in the reserve. 
that has a really steep track to it that I don't encourage anyone to go on. Um, the odd fisherman goes down with a, with a rope, but it's pretty rough. But there are there is a penguin house down there, and it's, I just found it by accident. They, they came in by boat to put it there with um, Glenn Bradbury, this builder who's got children at the school. And um, there's there's feathers. I mean, they're, they're, they're using it. So they're definitely involved with that. We also had the children help us with the revamp of Doc 200 traps. That was our first trapping exercise. These are rat and stoat traps. Those are those boxes that you see with, they actually have the same last name on them as mine, the Haynes traps you'll see around the area. So they're definitely, I, I think your, your suggestion is one that they would welcome because um, Dave Sedcole, it works really closely with us. He's the principal at Monganui School and Dave actually has a, a trap line, one of our new ones that we put in just with this new funding we had. And Dave is really keen. Like the kids come out once a week in school time and check traps. You know, they're, they're, they're heavily involved in the project. And, and it's all about learning. It's like valid learning, not just token stuff. So no, they would, I'm sure they'd be very happy to um, be involved with that, without a doubt. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any, um, now Cheryl had her hand up. So Cheryl, would you like to ask some questions, please? Just one. Um, we live in Rangikapiti Road. We see hundreds of people going past and going up the track in the summer. I would expect that, uh, just as a guess, that it would probably be used by a good 10,000 people a year based on the number of people we see. Would that be accurate, John? I guess we'd probably have to put one of those little things they put on the roads to check numbers and have them walk past. Um, but I, I would think you're right. It's As I said, I've watched in the last, well, since we began to upgrade that track, and there's a little bit more involved. People didn't even know it was there. Um, now, no. because um, council had some, did some great work. It was done by Stonecraft, and they put new um, drains at the end of the road, at Rungi Capity Road, and then one of our um, and so they made it look accessible. We didn't, even, we couldn't even see it before. And then one of our volunteers, Brett Tercel, put in a little bridge at the beginning over a, a temporary running stream that only happens like when we have a storm like we had the other day. Um, that's also made it more visible. One of our goals um, in the future, and I'm not keen to do it yet, is to get signs for all of our tracks, but I didn't want to do it until the tracks are to a, a safer standard. So yes. Um, those numbers have increased just about exponentially in the last couple of years, um, just because people see it and then word of mouth goes out there, which is great. It's fantastic. I mean, we all know the value of walking. We all know the value. I mean, for me, I'm, I'm in the bush, even if it wasn't running a capity, I'm in the bush at least twice a week because of my tramping. And I know how good it is for people and I'd love to see. And that's one of the reasons that I'm so motivated to put in um, a whole diversity of plants. You know, we've reintroduced species that have been locally extinct for a hundred plus years, and they're going to make this just so much more. Um, obviously, it's for food for birds, but it's also food for the for the spirit of people that walk through. It's just it becomes more beautiful and more um, more meaningful when you walk through. Yeah, so it definitely gets used a lot. Is there any, thank you, John. Is there any further questions for John? Okay, thank you so much, John. Um, Cheryl took me on a wee tour when I was out there a couple of weeks ago and um, I saw where some of the steps are going to go. So I'm really thrilled, you know, you've got a great bunch of volunteers there. I do know a couple of them. So um, I'm yet to walk the track and um, I'll look forward to that in the summer. So thank you so much for coming and giving us your information on the application. It's my great pleasure. Thank you all for having me. I really appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Kakitiana. So Catherine. So the next two don't have video conference um, accessibility, so I will be calling them on my mobile and putting them on speaker so that you can listen to them. So one moment, please. Hi, John. Right, they're ready for you now. I'll just put you on speaker. 
So the gentleman we have on the phone now, the gentleman we have on the phone now is Mr. John Drew from the Monganui uh, Cemetery Group. John, go ahead. Uh, yes, I, I'm not quite sure what I'm meant to provide, so um, I'll just basically give you a rundown on our history and uh, what we do and what our long-term plan hopefully is going to be. Um, we basically, as a committee, have run the Monganui Cemetery and Cemetery Reserve for the last nearly 30 years. And um, to date, we've been able to do it um, entirely out of funding from the cemetery and uh, with a little bit of assistance from RSA and one or two other places. Um, we have quite a large area there, probably one of the larger cemetery areas in the Far North District Council of in excess of 20 acres. Um, it was in um, southern pine and re and growth, um, and the opportunity came along um, to clean it up because it was getting an a becoming an expense uh, to the committee and growing. Um, so the money that we got from the pine that was cut down and um, we've put into um, fencing and gating uh, to make the area basically stock proof um, and the intention is um, to eventually have it in grass so that it becomes a maintenance free asset um, to the committee and the council uh, a bit like the reserve that you've got down Paradise Road, which I think is grazed and kept clean um, for the council. Um, the uh, We've got a bit of a bump at the moment because uh, we've got to the stage where all the uh, uh, tailings and that type of thing has been heaped, uh, but we need to... Um, burn them and dispose of them and perhaps bury the odd big log and that type of thing to um, keep the program going. And um, that's basically what our application to the community board is for assistance for that. Um, I hope that gives you a bit of an idea. Um, Thank you so much for that presentation, Azrini. Um Members who would like to ask a question, please. Can't hear you. Yep, they're just asking if anyone has any questions. Anyone? They're all shaking their heads. <laughs> Sounds good. As in, as in no questions. <laughs> well, we're, we're quite happy to meet with anyone and show them what we're trying to do. Um, it's, um, yeah. Well, there's no questions. Well, I can't say much more, can I? If <laughs> they haven't got any more questions, can I, Catherine? Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you so much. Any more? No, but they're thanking you for calling. Thank you very much, John, and I'll be back in touch with you later on today with a decision. That'll be great, Catherine. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye. Bye. And now I will call up Rachel from the hospice and she can talk about their application. Technology these days is great. Hello, Rachel speaking. Hi Rachel, it's Catherine. If you want to go with your spiel, they're ready for you now. Okay, thank you. So go for it. Hi everybody, I'm sorry about the Zoom meeting, um, it's a bit of a failure. Um, I am just putting our application in for our palliative care specialist, um, Dr. Warwick Jones. Uh, he travels north for us um, from Wangarei to care for our patients. Um, he's our only specialist that we have. Uh, he visits all our patients in their own homes. Um, without him, we would, you know, we'd be in a real predicament. Um, we have lost the services of Dr. Burns now, as he's retired um, down to Wangarei. So it's, it's Dr. Jones is obviously rather very critical to our patients here. Um, have you any questions about the applications? Hi, 
by all. Is there any um, questions for Rachel? Everyone's shaking their head that they have no questions, Rachel. So I think your application is good and goes for it, like stands yeah. on its own. Yeah. Fabulous. Okay. No worries. I'll be in touch with you later today with a decision. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I apologise for my meeting. No worries. Thank you, Rachel. Bye. Bye. And that's everyone for the applicants. Oh, fantastic. That's great. Okay, now we're up to item 6.1, which is a confirmation of previous minutes. So um, I've read them, so I shall move them. Do I have a seconder, please? I will. Thank you, Cheryl. So we'll just go through and um, do the voting. Is that how I'm supposed to do it, Kim? Yes, that's correct. If we okay. could do a vote by division, so you say either for or against. Okay. So I'm going to go through each board member now. So Darren. Do you confirm? Yes. Yes. Cheryl? Yep. Jackie? Yep. Felicity? Four. And John? Yep. Thank you. So we're on to item 7.1, which is the chairperson and members reports. Um, so do I have a mover, please? Yep, Jackie. Thank you. Seconder? Yeah. Who was that? Was that Darren? Yes, yes, it was. Oh, I just can't hear you. Thank Sorry. you. So, um, I'll s so my report I'll, um, is be the first report in, in the virtual area. So the meetings have been, um, there's been quite a lot of meetings on Zoom or on Teams through this period. So um, please take it as read. I have actually um, given you quite a bit of information on the update, updated information on what's been happening. So if there's any questions about my report, please ask. Um, can I say that um, with regard to the annual plan submissions, I'm hoping that the council, when they do their deliberations, will favourably look at Monganui Information Centre and Te Ahu because they're both, um, you know, very important in our area and also um, they'll both be on the back foot because of COVID and, you know, and tourism is really important to us. So um, I think that I'm hoping that the council will be supportive of them. Also. Um, congratulations on the Anzac Day video. That was fantastic. Thank you, John. And of course, the other thing um, is to say thank you to Felicity um, Boy for um, oh, doing yes. master, the Tahuku master plan. It was fantastic. Thank you, Felicity. Yeah. So with the uh, water, we are question. now at level three. So um, at that point when I wrote the report, we were on level four. So I'm just sort of stating now we, we are actually on level three. So so that's all good. Mm -hmm. So any further questions from my report, please? Um, oh. Not a question, um, just feedback from my nine-year-old son who wants to spend his entire afternoons every day at the Flying Fox. Um, and I was there yesterday, yeah, and I was there yesterday, and the queues, it's just, we need more, he says, we need, we need another one of these mums, because it takes too long in the queue to get on the flying fox. 
<laughs> so, um, and the only one thing with that, with that was, um, oh, and the train being opened, the four-year-old just was in heaven. He just spent an hour on the train because he's a train driver. And uh, yeah, so it, those little things um, mean a lot to the kids in our community. So thank you everyone involved in that. Um, but I think we need a rubbish bin down there. That's my only thing is that I spent, while they were waiting in the queues, I spent my entire time picking up rubbish all around there and getting rid of rubbish. But I think we might need a rubbish bin down by there because the kids are waiting there and they're eating food and there's nowhere to put their rubbish. So just something to think about. Yeah. Okay. Can we oh. put that on our action, action list, please, Kim? Yeah. No problems at all. That is on the action list. Excellent. Thank you very much. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. So who's next? Um, Darren, your report. Uh, yeah, okay. Well, um, pretty much as it, as it, as it reads, um, I've been working with Maddie. Some people on Waterfront Road wanted gutter bars, but we've decided that after asking all the residents, they were all against it and the early childhood um, centres moving. So that's what we were trying to protect with the gutter bars. So we're just going now to try and get the road speed limit lowered from 100k, which it is, <laughs> to 50. And I think that's going to be what we're going to try for. Um, I've also started the project that John has sort of kicked off with um, getting Kane Atwood to do a aerial film of the area for John. Um, it hasn't been done yet, but it will happen. Um, the rugby field and tennis courts are nearly finished up here. Um, they started at level three, and we've got the rugby people and the bowling club all happy with the outcome. They've all got little bits of what they wanted. And uh, as you know, we had the roadblock up here and that caused all sorts of trouble. And uh, that's all seems to be sorted out now. And I had many meetings with our local policemen up here. Um, and that's about all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you, Darren. Is there any questions for Darren? Report? No. Thank you. Okay. Um, Yes, sorry, I, Madam Chair, uh, Felicity Ford. Um, I just had a question. Darren and I were dealing with the um, Kaupora Game Fish Club water supply for the boar. And um, the response that we had from staff um, it highlighted that the staff didn't feel that funds should be given to reimburse or to pay for the boar. Um, that supplies the public toilet there that the public use um, every day. Um, so that matter is not addressed as yet. Um, the staff reports have been given um, and the end result is that um, we might need to bring a paper to council, request a, a paper to council on it um, because uh, that, that issue isn't sorted. And Darren's probably gone to get something, I'm not sure. I'm <laughs> shutting my door here. Um, yeah, I'm happy to carry on working with that one with you, Felicity. Um, so, Kim, um, just in our action points, are we able to request a, a paper to council on that? That was the last matter we've heard back about that RFS that Darren and I were dealing with. So. Um, if we can have that on the action sheet as a um, council agenda item. Uh, so through the chair, we don't actually have an action sheet any longer. Uh, so you would need to raise a RFS or a request through the CE office email address for that report. Um, okay, Kim, but we're writing it down um, as a meeting. Yes, I have noted that. Yeah, note that and um, then we can put through a full request to see of all of the matters we raise in this meeting. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Felicity. So any further questions for Darren? Okay. Thank you, Darren. Okay, yeah. we're now on to Cheryl. So Cheryl, you, you may speak to your 
in this report, please. Thank you. Please take my report as being read. I do have um, an issue regarding the value of the reports. I think they would have more value if the um, administrator or whoever can read them and approach managers with issues that we record on the reports. And I've just heard that maybe there's another way to do it. But at the moment, I, I just want um, I just want our reports to have a bit more value by actually getting some responses to some of the issues that are raised by the community instead of just having the members' reports there. Um, for the purpose of the community, because I think probably about three people read the agendas. Uh, also, um, I just wanted to note that the Monganui Cemetery Committee um, congratulated Catherine on bending over backwards to do what she could to help them with the funding application. Thank you. So, Kim, can you write something down to see whether the um, whether the members' reports can be expanded, please, so that we can get some answers to queries raised? Uh, yep, so through the chair, they are actually your members' reports, so how they look is up to you. Um, yes. If you wanted to get further traction, you could include a recommendation in your members' reports, and then we could move those over into the minutes. Thank you. And so, so could the same apply then with the issue that was raised previously by Darren and Felicity? We could put a recommendation that something happens with regards to providing um, water to the toilets or whatever. Yes, that's correct. And then that way it would go into the minutes of the meeting that you would all agree to, and that's something that we could pass on to the CE's office. Okay, thank you. That's me. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Cheryl. So now, Jackie, your report, please. Oh. Yep. No, oh, it's there for reading. It's um, not. I just realised I've left some sort of important ones out. One was the we attended the um, and organised with Leslie Wallace the opening of the toilets out in Aipara since my last report, and um, that was and that's been hugely a great lot of feedback from the community. It's been a great thing. Um, it's sort of um, reinvigorated the Kororo Park friends of the park little Facebook group we have. We have a messenger group and um, been lots of people with eyes on the park now. We've tracked down a couple of taggers that were tried to tag. My God, we've got a vicious little group out here of uh, elderly people who just, um, you know, these, these kids couldn't get away from them. But it was, it was good. We uh, educated them on, 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 on park etiquette and um, it's been quite good down there. So um, the other one is our basketball and tennis courts that were taken over by the rugby club um, have been resurfaced and opened just before the lockdown and um, proving to be very successful. Um, also uh, worked with the domain, with the rugby club and the domain group to make sure that was closed down um, as much as possible during the lockdown because of the, the COVID thing, which was quite um, hard to do, um, to explain to the kids you can't use the basketball court um, when they've got all that time on their hands. Um, so it had to do quite a bit of work there. So that's just the only things to add on to my report. Um, yeah, I, I like the idea, Cheryl, of putting, um, being able to do recommendations via our reports to make them more sort of part of our, our everyday practice. So that would be cool. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, we had the similar thing down here, Darren, with the total point being closed in the shipwreck bay. And that sort of seems to be an ongoing issue that I don't know how we're going to resolve that. And I, I think um, need to do, whether it's council or, or what are we going to do to try and make sure that the, the to get the balancing act of, of the of the locals in the Tangata Whenua in particular, who want to protect what's there from sort of the ravages of motorbikes and and pillaging of this the kaimwana, you know, um, it's, it's a very difficult thing to get the balance right. So I'm still working on when I'm having conversations with people, which I'm just feeling my way into that space um, because it's it's a minefield of opinion, of public opinion in there and um, different extremes. So um, yeah, just yeah, it's it's going to be a work in progress working through that. 
that issue out here in Ahipara. So, uh, yeah, otherwise, yep, yeah, all good in the hood. Kia ora. Um, Any questions? Um, Madam Chair? Yes, Felicity. Um, um, I just wanted to ask the board if the board have been updated about the legal status of the road and the access over the Tikohanga land ruling by the Māori Land Court. No. No. Um, okay, so um, just to clarify, um, in July last year, the council lawyer investigated the legal status of the road and researched the Gazette notice that relates to the land um, that the road is on. Mm -hmm. So the road itself was gazetted in the 70s and is legal road, including where the gate is, which is across Council's Road. Um, further to that, the access over the Chikohanga block, the Māori Land Court, eight years ago, ruled that that was a public road access um, for the public. So there's that legally public access across there. The court did also rule that the trust was determined where the public could cross, but the public access specifically could not be inhibited. So um, there is legal public access fully all the okay. way through the beach. So how do I get how do I get access to that? Uh, if, if you like, I can forward you the email from Council's legal um, yeah. team. Um, George Wanepo is Council's lawyer. Um, and um, you can be provided that. Um, it's, um, it, it's the information from the Māori Land Court determination as well as the Gazette notice. That would be really helpful because it is a sort of he said, she said situation out here and um, it, it does cause a lot of angst amongst everybody, you know. Um, yeah, it would be good to have that clarified so that the public know what is what the rights are of people because um, yeah I can understand during the lockdown why you'd close it off because of the you know, sort of the surfing thing that was going on and trying to sort of minimize the heart minimize those risks but um, it sort of has extended on and questions are being asked is, is this legal and so yeah and there seems to be there's certainly two camps in this area with regard to that thank you Felicity Thank you, Jackie. Um, uh, the... Ma Madam Chair, sorry, just to comment with Jackie about the toilets as well. Mm -hmm. um, so those toilets came from Taipa. It took two years to get them there. We had to um, wrangle our way to get those there. So um, maybe for future openings, um, if other people can't attend and it takes them two years to achieve, maybe we could get some history on it, um, you know, to pass on to the people attending it and, um, you know, the whatever yeah. goes into the paper, etc. We're happy to help with that. Cool. Okay, then. Yeah, we're sort of organised by Leslie Wallace, I think, because she's been the chairman of our little order group there. So she just she's dragged me great. out. She's like, hey, public speaking, Jackie, you're going to do it. I went, oh, great. Thanks. Thanks. Love all that. Thank you, Jackie. It was just a bit unfortunate that Felicity and I, who, who did all the work on the the actual project couldn't attend because we had council meetings that day in Kaikoui, so it was just a bit unfortunate, but never mind. Um, it's okay, it was all good. Yeah, the kids opened good. it, so we got that nice yeah, thing in the amazing. paper and that bit of ownership from it. They loved it. The kids yeah. thought it was great. That's yeah. Great. Okay, thank you. So the last person is John. Your report. Unfortunately, your name's been Sorry. missed off it. Excuse me, Councillor. Uh, Chairman, um, Councillor Axe has had his hand up to ask a question there as well. Oh, sorry, um, Darren. Okay. That, that, that's okay. It was a question for Jackie. Is um, Shipwreck Bay still closed, Jackie? Or I don't it think it. I don't know. I've, I've, I have to. There's been some more stuff on the paper. I'm pretty sure it was open for the weekend, but um, I'll have to. I don't I haven't. I haven't checked. I haven't been down there. Okay. Uh, no. Thanks. I'd have thanks. to. I'd have to check. As, as I heard it had opened for the weekend, but whether or not that's true or not is, yeah, I'll have to find out. Okay. So it hadn't been anything all. Usually, it's it's all up in arms all over our Facebook page. It's our Ahipara awareness page is very very active, 
and um, around this matter. So, um, but I hadn't seen anything. I'll have to have a look. Have to on it. So, no news is good news, is what I was thinking. <laughs> okay, yes. Yeah, um, my turn, I think. Hey, um, I'm not sure why my name's not on that. <laughs> I don't know what I did there. But um, basically, my report's there um, to be read. Uh, the work that Darren and I decided to start with. Um, I've actually been doing some work on both ends, um, the A Park and Hohora Eden, as far as I can before I get um, the footage. Um, I think if we go back to the video we created for the Anzac Day, um, before we turned off the site, we ended up having, I, I turned the site off so we didn't have to pay hosting, so I created it as a um, a bit like a, a proof, so we weren't paying. So if, um, if, I, if, I, if it's not off right now, it will be off shortly, so we don't have to pay for an annual host fee. Um, but we got over 700 looks, which, um, sorry, video watches, we got a lot more looks to the site. Um, and if, I suppose if you average it out to some people would look on their own, some would be with two, some people said they were with the whole family of 13, you know. So let's say we averaged to three or four people. It's, it's, it was actually watched by quite a number. So that was um, really positive. Um, yeah, don't know where we'll go with that next year, but it was um, hopefully we'll obviously be having the service at the Yahoo as we normally would. Um, but if, you know, I know we could always video, um, video something like that and have it for others to watch that couldn't make it. Whether we've done that in the past, I, I, don't, I don't know. Um, just gathering the way we have been on um, uh, with our, our Zoom and Teams meetings and that, and um, just listening to today, one thing I, I think we've missed, and I really think it's important that we do it at some stage as, a, as a, our war tour. Um, like, I'd like to know more about, especially what Cheryl's doing out in. Um, really understand the, the walks that we've got. Um, Darren and I can show people what we're we're on about before we, you know, as a group. And I don't know, um, yeah, I don't know where we're at there, but as a recommendation, let's make it happen and and have an itinerary that we can um, that we can all sort of chuck in so that it's relevant. Um, and that's me. Thank you, John. So what I'm hearing now is that, um, do we want to do some recommendations today? Is that possible? Or would you like to leave it for your next report and do your recommendations on your reports then? So. Um, I think we need to uh, recommend that. Well, we need to, we need to ask the question, what's, ha what's happening with the ward tours? Like we never got to do ours, and I think it's really important. You know, I would have known more about the um, those items that have come up for. Um, you know, the people asking for uh, funding today would know more about the park, the walk, and possibly the cemetery, things like that. You know, um, yeah. So let's let's find out from. Um, the right people where what's going to happen with the war, the war tours and let's put it in place let's make it happen how do we do that so through the chair um we will be making sure that you do have your war tour rescheduled for some point soon it's just a matter of going through and setting everything back up in place and having a confirmed date That's great. Thank you. Well, I'm, I'm, that's, that's fantastic. So we will get the ward tour eventually. So what I'm asking about is the recommendations um, that we're all talking about is to, do we want to put the recommendations forward into the minutes or would you like to just recommend on your next report? So through the chair, I have put them in place for this meeting, if you are happy 
to go with the two additional okay. um, resolutions that I've included. Right, okay, I request council. Yes, so the two are request council install a rubbish bin or bins at JC Park, Guy Tyre, and request presented to council on the reimbursement of water from the bore from the public toilets at the rugby fields and tennis courts in Hohora. So is that... Um, so um, what was that? Yeah. Yes. Um, sorry, the matter at Hohora is for the Hohora Big Game Fishing Club. Um, cost for the rebilling of the water bore. That's just, the, it's it's the whole of the game fish fishing club. Um, it's, it's a site, um, so we're just a few minutes to meet those. Um, yeah, B-O-R-E, that's okay. <laughs> Big Game Fishing Club, thank you. Um, staff have already done um, reports on it, so you know it's just putting it to council. Um, Kim, how, Kim, how do we, um, how, like, how do we find out about? I know you said it's going to happen, the war tours, but how do we put in place that? Um, when, when will we know? Um, through you, Madam Chair, I will talk to my team leader today after this meeting and see where we are up to with that and be able to get back to you all this afternoon. Yeah, that's great because it was a KPI of the CEO and we're the only award that didn't happen. Yeah. Madam Chair, I would like to know that when we have our ward tour, um, input from community board members is included. Definitely. Sorry, through the chair, can you just repeat that again, please, Member Bainbridge? I would like to know that when we have the ward tour, input from community board members is included. Okay. So we do a D asking when the tour is and could we please have um, in Please include the community board members' issues. Issues, yeah. Can we also have a date for the next combined community board meeting, please? Through the chair, yes. So we had arranged for the combined community board workshop to take place and we did have a date. Unfortunately, we then went into lockdown. So this will also be something that comes back up when we're also looking at the pillar, etc. So, so Kim, um, on B, could you put um, near the flying, the rubbish bin to be installed by the flying fox, please? So that um, the staff know where to where it goes. I will put specifically near the flying fox. I would just hate for it to happen where if you say the flying fox for some reason they're not able to put it at the flying fox that they then in, don't install any rubbish. Yeah, near near the flying. Oh, that's great. So, um, is there any further issues to be recommended? 
Not at this point. Okay. So we have to move the the, the issues B, C, D, and E. Is that right, Tim? Uh, through the chair, it's okay. We can move it as part of as long as Member Jackie, well, Member Brown, and Member X are okay with those changes. Yes. Then we can just vote on it now. Okay. Right. -o. I'm I'm okay with it. And Aaron, yes. Thank you. Cheryl? Yes. Me too. Jackie? No. Felicity? Aye. No. No, I agree. Well, so we're all all in favour. Thank you. Well, that's great. Right. So we're on to item now 7.2, which is the memorial seat donation on page 28. So I'll move the recommendation. Do I have a seconder, please? Um, excuse me, Adele. Um, what happens if we don't? What, what, if, what happens if this thing's ugly? Is someone going to take it away? What do you mean ugly? So we haven't actually been sent at all, have we? Sorry? We haven't been sent a photograph of it. It says it's um I think I think it's all good. I think we're all everyone's happy, but I just wonder whether whether there's a responsibility around it um if i suppose we you know i suppose we would have to get it removed but um yeah we're not going to know until it's there are we no so what i could do is i could pop into gears and see what it looks like if you'd like to leave the item to lie on the table until the next meeting oh i i, I don't think that well up to everyone else. I don't think it's necessary. I just wonder um, if um, if it was uh, maybe mentioned that to, to Geds that um, the community appreciate what they've done, um, but also request that if it if for whatever reason it had to be taken away, would they do that? You know, I don't, I don't or is that or do they not care about it from now on and we just would have to dump it somehow? It's just aesthetically, what's it going to do to the, to the park, you know? Does anyone else have any conversation on this issue? Um, I agree with John. If it turns out to be not satisfactory, we need to know who's responsible for um, perhaps its removal. <clears throat> Or if it's vandalised or whatever. Well, it's going to become a council asset. Um, it looks like. I think I, I'm I'm right in my thoughts there. I hope. Um, so, Jeanette, I see that you're here now. So, would you like to have a, a um, come into the meeting and discuss this, please? Um, are you able to? Did you get sent a photograph of the? Of the actual seat? No, I didn't. But um, I had a had the application form uh, submitted via Kelly, and it all looked in a reasonably good order to me. Okay. So, with regards to ownership, I just came in to the end of that conversation. The ownership does be, does sit with council once it's installed. So, any maintenance on the seat will be through. Um, district facilities operations. 
Okay, thank you. So what would you like to do? Would you rather it sat on the table till I went and got a photo and showed everybody, or um, would you like to pass this? Because I'm quite happy either way, so that you're all happy with the seat. Uh, I, don't, I don't think I just want to want to delay it anymore i'd say if it's going to be council property and and council want to get rid of it then it won't be an issue it might just we just you know i was just worried that if it doesn't fit the look and feel of the park are we allowed to um move it if it's a council issue there's no reason why you shouldn't yeah so i, yes, I move that we um that we continue and and pass it that's 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 great. Okay, thank you. Oh, well, what I'll do is I'll um I'll get a photograph anyway and share it with you all. And also, I'd like to do a thank you letter to the to Gears as well on behalf of the board. I think that would be timely to do that. Can I just can um, I just, sorry, uh, Adele? Can we? I can have a look at the application form because I think there may be a photo attached to that. Um, but I thought I attached all that with the report. Uh, through the chair, there is a photo on page um, 32 of your agenda. It's not a very clear photo as such, and I'm not too sure that that is the actual seat that they will be putting in. but. It yeah, is a photo. Yeah, I think Tim is just like a graphically drawn thing. So I don't think Agreed. It, I don't think it reflects what it's what it's gonna be. No. It's gonna be a heavy seat, it's granite, so hopefully nobody be able to remove it or anything. So um, yeah, it'll be pretty heavy. Through the chair, Adele, we can um, have it installed on a concrete uh, pad so that it gets bolted down onto the concrete so it can't be removed. Oh, great. And, unless, unless they go in with bolts, yeah. with a bolt yeah, remover okay. thing, whatever they're called. Yes, oh, that's fine. Oh, well, that's, that's all good. Thank you. Okay, are we going to, so I'm, I, um, I'll go through the voting list. Darren? Are you happy? Yes. Uh, through the chair, we do need a second person for this oh, motion before no we can put no it to the vote. Yet. Okay. I thought Cheryl did, but anyway. Yeah, we can say I did. Okay. Thank you. Okay, Darren, you're okay with it? Yes, I am. Cheryl? Yes. Jackie? You dropped out, Jackie. Hello, I'm here. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Felicity. Paul. John. Hi. Okay. Thank you so much, everyone. So, and I'll do a thank you letter as well. Thank you, um, Jeanette, for coming in and speaking to the application. Thank you. So we're up to item 7.3, which is the naming of Paper Road of Kai Mau Mau Road, between 224 and 232 Kai Mau Mau Road to Shine Road. So, um, Madam Chair? Yes? Um, I've got a different motion than what's on the paper. Okay. Um, so before any... A motion is moved. I just wanted to move to let this item lie on the table and I can explain that um, when the time comes. So are we going to discuss it before we actually? Um, Madam Chair, the reason I was just raising is before we move any motion, I just wanted to um, give the background to that and um, let you know that I wanted to move a motion to let this matter lie on the table. Um, just till we get um, the further information. Um, some information's not in the report. Oh, okay then. So would, would 
were you wanted to, wanting to speak to that now or later at the next uh, if, if, no if that's okay with you i can i can speak to that if um yep. is there a staff member who's going to speak to this or uh, through the chair no we do not have a staff member here with us today to speak to the report okay i'm, I'm happy to speak to it and i don't know cheryl um Rainbridge might know some of the history as well um so I was contacted from um, the landowner on this this property. The, um, I've looked at some of the maps provided, and um, in the report here, it's it says here this is an unmaintained paper road which is on private property belonging to the Shines. Um, that's factually incorrect. <laughs> um, so. Um, the, the property um, and the maps provided show where the shines are on there and it doesn't have any information apart from from the shine um, family member there. Um, and it only shows a map showing the front of the site. But if you look on page 42 of the report, um, if you bring up that map there, you can see the shine, the two small shine um, blocks, which is on the top right hand portion. Um, I don't know, it might be about 10 hectares. The further 200 hectares, which are accessed from that road, the landowners not have not been contacted at all. Um, and that's silent in this report. Um, and yeah, so that was quite strange, I, I felt. Um, so basically, the matter to let it lie on the table is just to contact the landowner so that they're aware of this and they're aware that this has been put forward. Thank you, Felicity, because you're just the right person to do those sort of searches. So that's fantastic. Thank you. Um, I'd like to Kim Felicity's motion, please. Thank you. So the motion is to leave this one to lie on the table. Do we have, um, so Felicity's moved it and you have seconded it, Cheryl. So Darren, do you agree with that? Darren, member? X, do you agree with um, that motion? Oh, he's dropped off. Okay, Jackie? Yep, pending more information. Okay, so Felicity, you've moved it, so you're okay, John? Yep, all good. Darren, are you back yet? He's dropped out, I think. Well, I agree with it, so um, I'm not quite sure where Darren's got to. Just Can you make a note that Darren's not present? How do we work that one, Kim? Uh, through the chair. In the folk by division, it will just be that he abstains, seeing as we cannot get him. Okay, I'll, um, so he isn't abstaining, he's not there. Yeah, so I can either put that he left the meeting as well, if you'd like. Well, that's a more accurate one, isn't it? Yeah. I'm just texting him. Hey, uh, it's his well, episode. Um, excuse me, Adele, could you um, help just while we're waiting for um, Darren? How is yep. Laurie, Laurie? So, Laurie, I spoke to him Friday. He gave his apologies, and um, I haven't heard from him over the weekend. I asked him to give me a call if um, he wanted to discuss anything that was on the agenda, and I haven't heard from him. So, um, as far as I know, he's 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 getting lots of home help, 
and um, has he's still not a hundred percent. He's he's still not there yet. So um, hopefully over time he will be. I'm not quite sure what's happening with Darren. He hasn't come back yet. I'm back now. Oh, good. Okay. I, I dropped off. I just dropped off for some reason. Um, maybe my battery was low. I've just come running downstairs and plugged myself back into the power. Okay. So can we go back to that? Um, do you agree with leaving the um, naming of the paper road off Kai Mau Mau Road? To leave it to lie on the table for further information. Yes. Yes. Okay. That's fine. So Kim, you've got the yes now. So we'll move on. Thank you, team. So we're now on to item 7.4. So before we go on to that, would you like a wee break or would you like us to continue? Continue. Um, continue. Radio, that's all good. Okay. So we're on to item 7.4. 7.4, so stab, establishment of the Tahuku Drainage Area Committees. So, are we able to discuss it before we move anything, Kim, please? Uh, yes, that's fine, you can. Okay. Madam so, Board, is there a staff member to speak to this? Yes, certainly. Oh, that's what I was going to ask. Uh, so we do have Troy here who will be able to answer any questions you have. Oh, fantastic. Thank you. I saw him, his face pop up. I was hoping he'd stay. That's fantastic. Okay. Um, right, questions uh, about this paper. So who's going to go first? Um, I can, in the absence of anybody else. Ah, what's happened? Can anybody hear? I can hear you, Cheryl. Yes, oh, I can hear you. I'm down, but we can hear you. Okay. Right. So I think this has been badly handled. Um, I know now that under the red, um, under the legislation, committees or subcommittees of the board automatically drop off at the change of um, council at the end of each triennium. Um, Flood protection is really important to the economy of the far north and we need to make sure that something's written so that this doesn't happen again. Um, I, so, so, that, so that's one thing, um, but I think that the recommendation should be properly worded so that the board, the, the word in the, in the legislation is reconstitute, that's only being pedantic, but that's a fact. But at the moment, um, the, it doesn't seem to be, the drainage committees don't seem to be functioning very well. There seems to be a lack of coordination between the contractors, the landowners, the council and the community board and that needs to change and I'm confident that with um, Darren being the board's representative it will change. Um, but this recommendation that's um, on the agenda is having a number of members of those committees appointed, I think that the next meeting, we should have a meeting and Adele suggested a time the first Monday in September where all these committees meet and where the community, not the community board, appoints the people that they think are more appropriate for their area. Um, and I also think that the committee needs to have a copy of the management plan all the committee members need a copy of the management plan. The management plan has not been adopted by council to the best of my knowledge. That needs to happen. Um, there just needs to be a whole lot more formality around it, I believe, and um, discussion with the committees and the community. That's me. So, Troy, are you able to answer that, please? Uh, the, thank you, Adele. Can you all hear me? Yes. 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 Okay, cool, cool. 
uh, I won't turn my video on because that um, usually I get a lot of lag through Teams, so we'll just go with this if that's okay. <laughs> um, th thank you very much for the feedback there, Cheryl, or um, or community board member Bainbridge. Uh, there, there are a few things which I'd like to comment on there. Um, however, there's also quite a lot which I'm unable to, I suppose, provide a proper comment because um, for, for one, I, I didn't write the report personally, so I'm not able to help there. Um, also, secondly, there, there was, or um, the, the main reason why we went through a lot of delay at the start of this year and um, before actually reassigning or re reconstituting re reconstituting thank you the the drainage area committees was because there was an initial conversation where we wanted or where we were investigating whether or not we could change the format that these run to to change them to a slightly more informal um, drainage board i believe was the wording However, as we worked through that uh, uh, ourselves and the democracy services team figured that it wasn't the best time for that. So we ended up going back to the normal the normal process with committees instead. So that's my take on how we've managed to end up with such a delay from the start of this year until now when we're finally reconstituting them. Um, uh, if Kim or any of the democracy services guys available would like to comment on that, please do. Um, however, my final point on on the communication between staff, contractor, and the previous committee members or the community, um, I, I would just like to say that we we certainly do try our best in keeping in touch with with the contractor and keeping in touch with our, our committee members. And while we do have a little bit of trouble on that due to um, having to juggle other, other workloads, so we also work with urban stormwater uh, across all the different urban areas, so whether it's Kaikohe, Kirikiri, Kaitaia, and then we also go with the drainage areas. So the drainage areas do end up being um, just another part of the puzzle, unfortunately. So we don't quite get enough time as we should to be able to focus on those. However, however, we do try our best to keep in touch with all of the committee members, and they also have our contact details in case something would arise, and that they do end up using that and contacting us as well. So um, personally, I feel the communication is okay. However, I definitely agree it can be improved upon. And yeah, uh, as always, we're going to continue working and doing our best to try and improve. And that's all I have for now, thank you. Um, if there's anything else, let me know. Okay, one of the things I want to ask, um, where, where does the, um, the targeted rate for the 2021 year sit? How is that looking? Is it going to be um, included in the um, in the rates or um, because it, there's been no meetings in March. So has the work program been agreed to for the 2021 and is it going to be included please in the targeted rate? Okay, so uh, uh, you're correct in saying that we haven't had any meetings um, yet this year. However, throughout our previous meetings, so the ones held in very early September 2019 and then also March 2019. Throughout each of those meetings, we also provide a proposal on the following year's um, figures as well. And I believe that would have also included the 2021 targeted rates. So there is a proposed program there which has been approved and amended through previous committee meetings. And um, while we haven't had a more up to date one put together, typically the program, the work program and the cost is very similar going year to year. Usually there's minor increases 
um, whether that's to go with inflation for works or however the the program itself stays very similar throughout as you know each drain either needs to be sprayed once or twice a year and the spraying cost has been sitting quite uh, quite static over the last few years at about 50 cents per meter. I, I believe they work at 55 cents at the moment. Um, so uh, aside from that, everything should be quite consistent still from, from the last year or last two years. So I think we can be quite confident in the existing targeted rate and the program plan for 2021 will be um, something safe and workable for us. Thank you, Troy. Is there any further questions or um, discussion around this? Hello, Hello. Madam Chair. Um, Chris, yeah. Jackie here. Yes. Yeah. Um, I, I talked to um, Philip Murray, who's the new CEO of Tararua yesterday, her, and he uh, he says, well, he hasn't had a chance to have a look at this because, you know, I only put the agenda on Friday. And um, they are very interested in what's going on with this matter because they're now the owners of Bells and Sweetwater Block and I think it's something like that. They've got, you know, they're, they're fast becoming large landholders in the area and they're wondering if they need to have more of an active role in things like drainage committees. And I says, I don't know. I'm just reading the report. It talks about possible implications for Māori, um, but I'm thinking now that Māori are becoming more landholders in there, do they need to be included in this? And so I'm in support of what Cheryl's saying around we need to have um, the more about the community being involved in this and the who's on the boards and, yeah, progressing this through. But, um, yeah, I'm just I'm a little bit concerned that, that, that um, we don't have a programme that's been ratified as such do we is that what you're saying is that what i'm hearing pretty um, much yeah and i'm thinking gosh this would not look good if we ended up with a massive flooding situation something happening and we don't even have a program a plan for, for, for how this is being managed at the moment not good um yeah, yeah so i'm thinking september is the first meeting that's quite a long way away is that oh, uh, really it's, it's, it's actually not too bad because it gives time for everything, you know, people to get their ducks in a row. Okay. But I'd like to propose an amendment. Um, <clears throat> and amend, that, Madam Chair, before um, Member Brainbridge moves to the amendment, um, um, Aisha said that she'd just like to respond about, I'm guessing it's about the annual plan. Okay. Just before any yes. amendments are moved, if that's okay with you, Member Brainbridge? Yes, certainly. Good morning. Good morning. Um, so I, I just wanted to comment because I don't know that um, Member Bainbridge's questions have been answered. So the recommendation that you've got in front of you is asking you to re-establish the drainage committees and assign the membership. So in council and the community board standing orders, there are rules about the establishing of a committee and you do need to appoint the membership. Um, so going back to Member Bainbridge's comment, it is quite possible for you to canvass the community to see who your best people are to appoint to these subcommittees and we can definitely help to facilitate that. Um, I think that might answer some of Jackie's queries too about whether or not Māori need to be more active at the table. Um, that's definitely a consideration. The other point that I wanted to make um, was that it's really good that you're having this discussion and that you're all signalling a level of responsibility and concern over what is happening. That is part of the reason why we are asking you to re-establish these drainage committees so that you can have that oversight and make sure that you've got that level of comfort in what is happening. Um, so this will help facilitate that. Thank you, Aisha. So, Felicity. You wanted to say something? Oh, sorry, Member Brainbridge was moving her amendment. I just wanted to check with Aisha if there was any response about budgets for the annual plan when the annual plan um, council meeting is, is occurring very soon. And, and how can we adopt the annual plan when we don't have budgets? 
and this is yeah, a targeted so just, rate yeah so just in terms of the targeted rate i don't know what that looks like or what the program of works looks like for the new financial year um we can look into that but i can't comment on that aspect can you also comment on that uh, yeah, yes, through the chair. Um, so what we've, uh, as I mentioned before, in the previous years and the previous meetings, so in, even the most recent one in September 2019, we had we had a, approved multiple work programs. So that's for uh, the remainder of this year, which is there's very little of the remainder of this year left to go now. However, also one for 2021 as well, and that includes the targeted rate. So while I can't confirm that it's been uh, included in the annual plan, I would suspect that it has, and we can um, have a look and confirm that for you guys after the community board meeting, if you like. Can we add that to action sheet, please, Kim? We haven't got an action sheet, please. <laughs> <laughs> Madam Chair, it's Aisha here again. I've just flicked a question through to uh, Janice Smith, our Chief Financial Officer, to see if she can comment. Um, in the meantime, I see Member Axe has his hand up. Maybe he wanted to make a comment or question. Um, yes, yes, I would. Um, I, I spoke to Adele yesterday and I had a quick chat to Jackie this morning. Um, I had a mem uh, an, an, an ex-member of the committee, Boyden Thompson, rang me yesterday and he was saying that they wanted an, an AGM, even though he's not, no longer involved. Um, and I promised that I would get back to him with some information. So that's why I'm so interested in this. So are we going to have an AGM or are we just going to have a workshop as the question? Would you like me to try and respond to that, Madam Chair? Yes, please, Troy. Okay. So each committee meeting is um, is available to the public. Um, any public who attends those meetings, I believe they're not able to speak unless they're given speaking rights at the beginning. However, anyone is allowed to attend those meetings. I'm, I'm unsure if they're publicly if they're publicised at the moment or publicly notified, I, I believe that they have to be or they're required to be, so they shall. Um, however, anyone is able to come along to those. So if Croydon would, or anyone else for that matter, um, whether it's uh, some of the members from Te, te Rarua, Te Ar Arua, um, whether it's some of those members as well who would like to come along, they're more than welcome to as a um, public are, are welcome to come along to each of the committee meetings. Thank, thank you for that. Thank You're you. You're welcome. So Madam Chair, Aisha again here. Um, just to add, I, so the drainage committees aren't required to hold an AGM. So I guess I'm curious about what Croydon wants to achieve from having an AGM meeting and whether or not he wants to perhaps have some input into what the membership might look like or is wanting to see the financials that AGM would normally consider. That is something that we would have to have a conversation with him about. Okay. Thank you. So to, from today, what we do is actually um, appoint the members from this particular recommendation so would I be right there it sounds like so there's going to be no AGM so there'll be no chair so who will be chairing the meeting uh, through the chair so this will set the process in place so that the committees are established and then at their first meeting they will decide the community board will start the meeting until the chair is appointed so no different to your inaugural meeting that you had uh, in November, October November last year Right. Oh, that's that's quite clear. Thank you so much. Oh, that's good. So, shall we just go through the different um, drainage areas and um, ensure that we have 
Um, I um, I want to know whether we're giving are we giving the community what it wants and what it needs in order to manage this because um, it sounds like you know they've got no chairman they've got no real way of having input into um, what's happening here and they don't actually know what they're doing they don't you know maybe not know about the management plan so what I was going to move was that that the community board this just starts off re-establish it should be that the community board reconstitutes that's being pedantic the um the committees but i'd also had like to see another couple of and that and that the board requests the council to publicly notify a meeting of all committees to be held on monday the 7th of september to um, discuss the proposed program to discuss the management plan whether it's still appropriate to to what the boards are trying to achieve and to um, develop some sort of a process so that the dam drainage committee doesn't drop off every three years without um, and, and gets overlooked again. So through the chair, um, there have been chairs of the previous drainage committees and they get appointed at the beginning of each triennium when the committee gets re-established or reconstituted so it's not that the committees haven't been set up previously it is part of the responsibility of both council as well as those committee members to make sure that the right people are appointed and that the information is passed out to the community now they did redo um, the drainage committee strategies and they were adopted so there are strategies in place. They were not only adopted by the uh, drainage committee, but also by the Teheku Community Board. Now, the Teheku Community Board, as far as I understand, has the major responsibility of the drainage committees, not council. So it's not that council actually needs to adopt those strategies. It's up to the drainage committee and the Teheku Community Board. Okay, well, I'd like to see what the strategy is, please. Yep, can certainly. I, so each three of the drainage committees have a different strategy and they are available on our website as far as I understand, but Troy can confirm that. So Troy, are you able to confirm? Okay, through through the chair, thank you. Um, thank you for that, Kim. I'm, I'm unable to confirm whether they are online at the moment. However, I, I agree with Kim and can confirm that um, several drainage area management plans have been through the committee and partly through the community board. However, those are all draft versions. So we do not have uh, published or finalized versions of those at this stage, however, drafts have been approved and they're um, still to be worked on. Uh, after we get through that section or that 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 portion, then uh, ultimately they'll go to the regional council, which will support us and uh, I suppose just ensuring that the work is being done to their standard <coughs> as well as ours. And why that, is it going to the regional council? That's not a requirement. Yeah, I think um, it is. So particularly with the Motutangi drainage area, I believe oh, that it's a requirement and that will yeah, aid us in area. getting a resource consent for it. However, the others, I, I'm not entirely sure on the wording, so I don't want to slip up here. However, the other three, Kaitaia, Kaikino and Waiharara, those are activities which, um, while we don't require a resource consent, it'll be favourable for us to have management plans that have gone through the regional council just um, to support as opposed to as a requirement mm -hmm. that would be going above and beyond. However, I think it's something that's that's appropriate for us to do. So Mauritani's got um, ecological values apparently. So that's why it's different to the other two. Yes, yeah. 
the the Motutangi drainage area is, is surrounded by quite a few uh, conservation lands, um, particularly I, I believe it's the Kaimau Mau Scientific Reserve, and then also the the Motutangi Scenic Reserve. If I've got that correct, hopefully I have. And we are currently working through a, uh, a, a some form of a management plan with the Department of Conservation in order to make sure that any work we do beside or within conservation land is going to be done uh, in accordance with with their requirements as well as ours. So there's quite a lot going on with the the Motutangi drainage area in particular. Uh, that that concession agreement between DOC will also be um, be included or be our overarching management plan for the Motutangi drainage area. So that is also underway, which um, we've been waiting for quite some time now for DOC to provide a response to us on that. So unfortunately, not a whole lot of progress um, with Motutangi. However, it is it is in hand. So we're talking about strategies and management plans. Where are we actually going with this? What is what is required? Can, can I ask, um, Cheryl, um, Adele, can I please ask, if with these committees that are created for each area, is, are the public welcome to those meetings when they hold a meeting? Like we're talking, um, can, can Te Rarawa turn up later and have their say? And, and if so, then surely we can create these committees to get things going okay. and then welcome the public to come along um, and speak, you know, and, and speak later. So through you, Madam Chair, yes, they will be public meetings and yes, anyone will have an opportunity to come along. There have been previous drainage committee meetings where we've enabled a public forum session at the start, the same way that you would have in a physical meeting. Um, and there have been occasions where iwi or hapu representatives have spoken at a drainage committee meeting at those points. So I guess the question today is whether or not you're happy to reconstitute the drainage committee meetings and whether or not you're happy with the suggested membership. Um, so I guess one of the challenges in the membership, particularly for the Motutangi and Kaikino Waihara, the drainage committees, is that the person who previously chaired those meetings has resigned and isn't part of that membership, but for the likes of the Kaitaia Drainage Committee, the person who has previously chaired the meetings is happy to continue being on the committee, so they've probably got a lot of continuity in the way that they would operate, regardless of whether or not they have a couple of new members. So Madam Chair, the council or the board appoints the committee, but are they appoint? You know, how do they know they're appointing the best people? I would have thought the community would know that better than than the board, to be honest. So through the chair, on several different occasions, we've had people drop in and out of the drainage committees, and at that stage, it's put to those that are on the current drainage committee who they think should be um, appointed to replace that person. So the committee members do go out and ask the community who would like to be a replacement for that person. I, I look at the names and I, I mean, I don't know everyone, but I think we've got a start and, and we've got to make a start. So let's just, let's just move it forward to make a start, but then welcome the public to be part of it um, during the meetings. I, I, So um, is there any further discussion on this? So we can actually... Um, Madam Chair, I just wanted to highlight to the group and in particular the comments that Jackie's raised that these drainage boards have been around for over 100 years. Um, they're not new. Um, and um, this statute, you know, and the, the actual drainage areas, uh, basically it's cleaning of open drains. That's that's it. Funding, technical, um, and, um, you know, anyone can come along if they like and if they are interested in it, like if they have a farm, like, for example, what Jackie's raised about um, 
Fleetwood Farms, you know, um, Nissa Johnson or whoever's relating to that farming operation probably will have a good idea about the drainage in that area, for example. So um, it's a voluntary position and, you know, any of those people with those skills that want to volunteer their time, they can come along and um, come to the meetings. Um, I just wanted to highlight, Madam Chair, to the staff that the delegations relating to the funds, the delegations are not to the staff to spend the budgets. Those budgets are to, co are to go back to the committee to confirm to spend those budgets. So the staff don't have that delegation and they just need to recognise the processes. Um, may, it, just, it may just be a phone call and to um, check in with the committees um, about um, any, any funds that are to be spent prior to it being spent. Um, staff don't have that delegation. So I just wanted to reinforce um, that to Troy and, and the other staff that deal with these budgets, their targeted rates. Um, so the delegation for that sits with the community board who receive recommendations from the drainage committees. Yeah, correct. So and that needs to be really good liaison. I believe. So was there going to be a change of recommendation, Cheryl, or are you happy with what's happening here to get the, the ball rolling? On the well, I think that reconstitute, change reestablish to reconstitute, that's just a silly little thing, but it's that's a legislation. But I would like and and that, you know, the board publicly notifies a meeting of all the committees to be held on Monday the 7th of September to discuss the program and, um, you know, reappoint members or whatever. I don't, I don't know the right words for it, but I think it's something that needs to be done. Sorry, uh, the chair, just to confirm, you're either, while we can add more people to the committees at a later date and whenever that needs to happen, I'm just wondering if Member Bainbridge could explain her and that a bit more. So the oh. meetings will take place. So I'm just wondering why it's Monday the 7th of... Oh, that was just... Adele said it was the first Monday of September. That was all. Mm. But make it your September meeting or whatever. I just think it's been delayed a long time and it needs to go forward. Yep, so that's definitely the aim of this report, is so that we can get it to go forward. Now, as we've stated, they are publicly, or public mem members of the public are able to attend these meetings. So if it was discovered that somebody else had an interest on sitting on the committee, then we could bring back a report as well to the he to Heku Community Board to approve those new members. So I'm just not sure that you'll and that is necessarily oh, going to achieve what you're hoping. Um, but what about, so the council doesn't need to adopt a management plan, but we're talking about draft, or Troy, draft management plans and draft strategy. So we need to have something to work to, I believe. Yep, so those are in place and we do have the drafts written up and they have been through the uh, drainage committees previously. So can you make a note that we would like to see them, please, wherever they might yep. be? Sure. And also, what do we do to ensure that, say, at the next triennium, this f falls off and then doesn't get picked up again? What process needs to be in place for that? Because we might indeed, none of us might be on the board next time and then it'll fall over again, or it could, potentially. Um, Go so through the chair as far as I understand it is it does need to be reconstituted every three years I don't think you can override that by saying that you appoint the following drainage committees from yes. let's say 2020 through to 2030. No but there needs to be a process so that it doesn't you know I mean okay if it's going to automatically fall off then how do we ensure that after the next triennium it's picked up again. What happens if nobody does? 
so Madam Chair, I guess if the community board is going to work on strategies and the work programs, then it would be also prudent to include how these are managed moving forward. So then the community board could incorporate in that management plan or strategy that we have a drainage committee, including membership um, of landowners and affected parties such as DOC, Ewe, Hapu, to ensure that everything's encapsulated so that we have a documented record that shows that we agree that a management committee is the correct way to manage them moving forward. Sound right? Yes, sounds good. Mm -hmm. um, so the maps and the um, management plan usually come to the meetings, if I'm, I'm right there, aren't I, Kim? That's correct, they do. Yes, yes, yes because I've, I, they do refer to the management plan. And of course the bylaws come into it as well. So, um, so do we need to just change change anything? We don't really. We just need to leave it as it is, and um, and the staff will confirm when the next meeting is, which falls on September, I would suspect, because it's usually September and March. So, um, do we need to put any other anything else in the recommendation around that? Not really, as long as all those other things mentioned are. Um taken on board. And the only other thing I want to mention to Neil Thompson doesn't live in the area anymore at Motor Tangy, so he may not be wishing to go on that committee. I'm not sure who Kevin Campbell is. Kevin's Bob's son. He lives up there. He's a farmer. Oh, okay. I, I wondered whether it was or not. Yeah. So and I'm sure that, um, I mean, not in the Kaitaia committee, Jim Bennett, Mike Masters and Greg Uritich, um, more, more often than enough, Mike always turns up and Jim Bennett sometimes and also Greg. It just depends on what their workload is on the farm. So um, I think we're all pretty good with, um, with all those people at the moment, but they can actually include other people as time goes on. This is what I'm hearing. So I'm ready to move that recommendation. So Madam Chair, I'll just taking that. a point that was it Neil Thompson no longer lives in the area. That's right. Did you want us to remove him from the suggested membership? Well, you could do. Um, uh, be in contact with him. As far as I know, he doesn't have an interest in that area anymore. They, they live up near on the off-state highway 10 now, the top of um, near Felicities, near Church Road. So I'm happy to move that. So is anyone else um, willing to second it? I'll, I'll second it. John. Thank you. So we'll just go through the um, list now. So Member X. Yes. yes. Member Bainbridge. Yes, Patricia Butch has an E. Okay. Member Brown. Member Brown. Yes, yeah, I'm back, sorry. Councillor Foy. Four. And Member Stewart. Oh. Yeah, I second this. Yeah, that's right. Okay, thank you everybody for that discussion. So are you all happy to actually have a break now for 10 minutes? Yes, please. Okay, so we'll have a break for 10 minutes. Okay, so we're going to resume now on um, item 7.5, which is the funding applications on page 15. So his
So has everybody um, read the applications through? Yep. Do you, would you like a um, discussion on them all before we actually move everything? Can we move one of the... Oh. Can we move one of the... We've lost you, Cheryl. We've got your photo now. Can you hear me? It's really bad reception. Uh, <clears throat> it comes and goes, Cheryl. I think if you try and speak, we might be okay. Are we okay now? Right. I can hear yeah. sort of you. We heard that. Talk. So, who would... so we, we'll discuss. So we're allowed to discuss each application and before we move the amount and everything. Is that right, Kim? Uh, through the chair, that's correct. You can. Yeah. Okay. So we'll start with the uh, the Ranga Kapiti Reserve Society. Um, um, Oh, sorry, I've missed the first one. Sorry, volunteering in Northland. So, how does everyone feel about the 5,000? Okay. Yeah. I, I think they did good work. I'm okay with it. Um, we'll get here with There's someone doing the vacuuming. I've just muted member Bainbridge. I think it was coming through her end. Okay, Cheryl, you're, you would like to speak to the application? Can't. Put, unmute. unmute. <laughs> oh, I recommend three. Sorry. We didn't hear you, Cheryl. I think Cheryl said that she recommended 3,000. Okay. So how does people feel about that? How do members feel about $3,000? Yeah, I, I thought all the applications were good today. Um, I, I think five. Uh, I, I think five thousand is too much. Um, you know, we want to make sure we can try and give to as many as we can. Um, and I'll, I'll second the three thousand dollars. Okay, that's fine. Okay, thank you. Do I have um, any other comments about that? Does everyone, um, member X, agree with? 3,000? Yes, I do. Cheryl, yep. you moved it. Member Brown? Yep, it's okay. 3,000 is good. Councillor Foy? Yes, I'm happy with that um, amount. Um, yes. yes, and I'm happy with that amount too. So, so that's all good for that one. So, I mean, we'll do it properly when we um, actually move the whole lot. So, um, so it's $3,000 for volunteering Northland. Uh, the Ranga Kapiti Reserve Society, I'm happy with the 3699. I second that. I'm, I'm happy. I'd, um, with, I'd love to see um, involvement from couple of students when when the when the building's been done if, if possible just to maybe add to the that not a it's not a uh, requirement just a it'd be love it'd be good to see so member x 
Yes, I, I'm ha quite happy with that. Thank you. Member Bainbridge. Yep. Member Brown. Yeah, my only thing is that it needs to have some sort of doc, a doc needs to endorse it. It is on doc land. It needs, even though they might be following all the doc rules, I'd like to see something about that in there. Um, because, yeah, we might be funding. I, I know that they're going to be good. I know it's all going to be great. However, should it become a cave creek and we didn't do it, <laughs> you know what I mean? And we didn't do the right thing. We would. We're the ones that gave the funding for something that may not have been approved by that may not. It's on Dockland and it needs to have some sort of sign off by them that what they're putting in is proper. It needs to have that sign off. It does it's say in the application that they, they require steps built to rigorous dock standards. Yes. Yeah, they require but, built to rigorous dock standards. Doesn't mean that dock have have signed it off as okay. Right. Um, it, it just means that they're to be well, it, and that's great that they're going to build it to dock standards, but um, I think that this, this is a dock reserve at the end of the day, and dock need to take some responsibility as well. It's, it's all good just handing it over, but they still need to be involved in that and making sure that it is they need to have some sort of there needs to be some health and safety stuff here. Yeah, um, that you know. I just think it needs to be there. It's Would you like to add to the recommendation? And yeah, around yep, your I like what's being written now. That confirmation, yep, that because it is a building of a of a technically a facility, it steps as as a facility on a dock reserve. It, it would need to have to make sure that's happening. Um. Yeah, it's it's quite easy for doctors just say, oh, here you go, and then well, next minute something happens, or some, some you know, ten students slip off and fall down a, a cliff face. Um, they're looking at the community board for saying, well, well, why did you find something that was not right? Yeah, you know? exactly. So just just making sure that we're, you know, doing our bit to make sure that that doc have been involved and that they that yes. they sign off any plans. That's all I want. It's just that they, that they get plans signed off by Doc. Yeah, that's great. Thank you, Jackie. And I think um, Kim's gone and included that now in, in the recommendation as a B yep. as well. So that's fantastic. Thank you. Cool. So is everybody happy with that? Just put your fingers up. <laughs> and Member Stewart. Yeah, I am. Oh, good. So, um, We'll be all happy with that. So we'll go to the Monganui Cemetery Committee. I, I move 6,001 from Dockham. The reason being, this is a really um, busy committee, um, but as a committee, they don't have access to other funding, whereas a trust does. Cheryl, um, can I ask, um, sorry, through Adele, through the chair, still learning this through the chair thing, is the work they're going to do, is it like work that's going to have to be, I mean, obviously the digger work won't be, but they're talking about paying for the sprain and stuff. Is it something, what's going to happen going forward? Is it, obviously they do a lot of volunteer work, but is the spraying just a one-off sort of thing? Um, not really, but it is a one-off thing. Um, so they've got the cemetery that's being used, the historic part of the cemetery, and in the middle, there's a bit of great big trees that they've chopped over, and it looks like really rough ground. So once they um, burn the trees and bury them and spray it, um, it will be stopped in the meantime, and then as people die, the cemetery will expand. For them. So it's at the moment it's a really untidy bit between the two cemeteries. Um, just to make it all tidy. If they want to do what makes it work. 
So can, can I ask, do we not do we, do, we, do we not sell plots or anything there? Yeah, that's how they raise the rest of their money. Oh, okay. Yeah. So this is just a one-off job. It's been a lot of trees for for that much digger work. Adele, you can ex explain. Okay. Yeah, it was funny. I had to hear you, Cheryl. You were you were good before the break. Did you have a wine for lunch? Be <laughs> careful, guys. This is being recorded. Oh, that's right. Okay. okay. Can you hear me? Yes. So it's a one-off job, getting rid of um, trees and rubbish that's been chopped over, and then it will become a lawn, and they will graze it, and then um, extend the cemetery as people die, basically. Did you get that? Yes, thank you, Cheryl. So a couple of weeks ago, I went out to the East Coast and Cheryl took me on a tour of um, this area as to where the cemetery um, work is going to be done. And it's a huge area for all these volunteers to look after. And um, they're doing a fantastic job. They really are. It's a well-kept cemetery and um, the area that they want to improve it uh, does need a lot of work, so um, I'm very happy with the full amount of 6,100, but at any rate, it's up to you people, the board. So, Darren, um, Member X, so are you happy with the new recommendation? Yeah, I'll, I'll go with that, Adele. Okay, Member Brown? Yeah. Councillor Foy? Uh, yes, I'm happy to support the full amount. They do great work. Thank you. And Member Stewart. Yes. Cool. And Member Bainbridge, of course. Yep. We moved it. Okay, so that's all good. We'll move. So that's a change of six one hundred there. So we we'll go on to the um, hospice application. Is there any discussion on the 4,000? I'm happy to move that full amount. I think they do um, great work in our community and um, we're really lucky to have um, had those facilities in our town. Absolutely. I would like to second that. Thank you. Yep. Member Bainbridge. Yes, I support it. Thank you. Mem Member Brown? Yes, support it. Member Stewart? Yep. And I support it as well. So we'll just go back and um, and move the whole thing now that we've discussed them all the different amounts. And um, so I'll move the re recommendations that we've actually worked out. So it's 3,000 for volunteering Northland, 3,699 for the Ringer Capiti Reserve Society, 6,100 for the Monganui Cemetery, and 4,000 for the hospice. So I move all those. So as, do I have a seconder, please? I'll second it. Thank you, Darren. So we'll just go through Member Bainbridge. Yes, thank you. Member Brown. Yes. Councillor support. support. Member Stewart. Yep. And Member X. Yeah. Yes. You must help. Yeah, we all, all, all agree. So thank you guys. So that's we're on to the um, next item now, which is the 7.6 the project funding reports. I'll move that they, yeah, do we have to move them? They're just, they're just reports. Thank you. They're just reports from, um, yeah, page 103. No, sorry, 80, 83. Mm -hmm. 
So it's been moved. Who seconded it? Did anyone? Did anyone second it? Through the chair, no, no one has seconded okay. it. Yet. Do I have a seconder for the I roll. Thank you. So is everyone happy with this um, recommendation? So Member X? Yes. Member Bainbridge? Yep. Member Brown? Yes, in support. Councillor Foy? In favour. And Member Stewart? Yep. So everybody agrees. <laughs> Thank you. We're on to the next one, which is the where are we? The tr rural travel funding, seven point seven, page one o three. So I'll move the report. Mm -hmm. Who's the second up? I'll second it. Thank you. So the floor is yours, Leslie. Hi. How's everyone? Thank you for including me in the meeting. So a couple of things to start off with. So first of all, just like Jackie, our member Brown had um, commented earlier, just letting you know of my conflict of interest in regard to the rural travel fund application with the Tararua Rugby Club. Um, I am a um, committee member for that club, so I'm just letting you know that. And just to let you also know to be aware that all of these rural travel fund recommendations that are done by um, Sport Northland are then forwarded through to our manager management in Whangarei to get final approval before they're sent back and then um, included in your agenda. So just to let you know, it's not just me um, making these uh, recommendations that we do have a robust process so that um, all that all those recommendations are done as, as um, uh, honestly and fairly as possible. So I'm just letting you know about that. And also too, to let you know that I am the Monganui JNB Rugby Committee President um, because there will be some applications in here and a corridor around uh, the junior rugby competition that's coming up. So I'm, I will be able to answer some of those questions with that hat on, one of my many. Um, so from the top, and I think it is the rugby clubs first. So the um, so in, with the purpose of doing these recommendations, Sport Northland um, has contacted um, not only the regional sports organisations like Northland Rugby, um, but also done some investigation into some of the events that these applicants had originally applied for. Noting that these applications were um, submitted before the lockdown, so that at the time of application, all of these people thought they were going to have all of these events and um, uh, uh, competitions that they would be able to attend. Now, as obviously as COVID has come into place and lockdown has happened, um, some of these things don't, haven't actually happened. Some of them have happened, been gone past, some of them have been postponed, some of them have been cancelled, and some of them have been modified. Um, so what we've done is we've taken a little bit of a look at everything that's happened, um, contacted people to uh, clarify a few things, and then made some recommendations, which you see before you. These recommendations are basically based on the premise that um, once competitions and seasons start up, that these recommendations that we're making to you have already been pre-approved, and should those clubs then um, have that opportunity to participate because there's a competition or a season to participate in, that the, this money will then be able to um, be directed to them as soon as possible because the season now is so short and we want to ensure that whatever money that we allocate gets given to them as soon as possible so they can start using it. Um, hence why we're, we're doing these recommendations, even though some of these things may look a bit um, different to what they originally were. So, for example, the um, 
uh, the three rugby clubs applying, which is Tararua, Kaitai Pirates and Kaitai Rugby Club, are all applying for events for junior and IMB. So junior is under 13 down and IMB is all our teenage grade rugby. Um, obviously, when they applied, it looked a lot different. So we have had some feedback back from Northern Rugby Union about this. The um, IMB competition will, is due to start in a month's time, approximately the 20th of June. That is the date that they've put forward as the earliest possible start date based on clubs completing all their health and safety and COVID plans. It doesn't necessarily mean that that will be the exact start date. That's just the earliest anyone, any of them can kick off. So that is their competition. Their competition will look completely different instead of a northland wide one, which is what they had planned for. It will now possibly look like a north zone, south zone. So less weeks competition, less teams playing. Um, and you will see reflected in that that the recommendations that they've asked for and that we would normally approve have been reduced in accordance with that. The junior rugby league, rugby component for that is administered by the Monganui JMB committee, which is I am the president. We're in the process of um, meeting to determine what that season looks like. But if anything, um, that won't kick off till two till term three, and it will just be the duration of term three. So it could probably look at only being about ten to eleven weeks long. So everything is decidedly shorter than what it was originally. Um, with that in mind, I'm just going to find my sheet and see if I can share it with you. This is going to be fun. Push the right button. It won't be a second. Uh, 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 and I've got file. Hopefully. And maybe not because that could be just too tricky. But if uh, in the recommendation in your agenda, you will see a a, a table that says 2020 Winter Far North District Council Rural Travel Fund Recommendation Calculations. So this is a template that Sport Northern uses to help assist them in figuring out how much money to give to everybody. And we take the total amount of allocation funded, which in this case is $9,368.10. We add up all of the children that would be affected by this fund and basically give an average per child, which in this case is $13.36 per child, because there are 701 children identified in these applications. So for the um, Tararawa Rugby Club, they have 125 children who will be affected, who include junior rugby and IMB, including girls rugby, which will, um, are the only club in the far north that has girls and women's rugby in their club. Uh, the original application request was for $2,000. Based on the average times 125 people, comes out to about 1,670. So the recommendation made was for 1,600. Similarly, for the Kaitai Rugby Club, 121 uh, students, uh, children, came to 1,660. So the same amount has been recommended for them of 1,600. Uh, the Kaitai Pirate Sports Club, uh, they requested $2,000, but they only have 50 children affected by this application. And um, so we are making a recommendation of $700. And those are the three main um, sports clubs that have applied for this fund. The next one is the 408 Community Trust. That is a community trust that administers Wakaama. They have a very good relationship and partnership with Nga Hoi Horo Wakaama Club so that they can use their facilities, uh, their, sorry, their equipment at the at Lake Natu. Um, and they are asking for uh, support to allow children to get to trainings at Lake Natu and also to attend some regattas. Originally, the regattas that they wanted to attend um, in the original application, some of those have obviously passed. Some of them have been cancelled. And so they have worked with New Zealand Wakaama Association um, to include some local regattas on the national calendar so that not only their children can attend that, but that they can host those events too. So based on the 49 children that this will affect, um, the amount for them is $654. We've made a recommendation of $1,000 um, just because some of those uh, regattas are, are going to be slightly outside the norm and that they have a long way for all of their children just to attend trainings. 
The Special Olympics Bioviolence, the Bioviolence um, Special Olympics has a satellite uh, club here in Kaitaia, where nine students um, basically uh, learn to swim um, and learn swimming technique. Um, their main focus there is to support those children um, and young people with special needs and disabilities um, in regard to that, and then also provide an opportunity for them to compete against other um, Special Olympics clubs in the hope that they also may qualify for a national regatta. Again, some of those regattas have been cancelled, tier one and two, um, but they're still, they will still like to train and that is subject, obviously, um, during the winter time, to the um, swimming pool up at Aniwaniwa to meet their health and safety regula uh, regulations and open up so that they can participate. So although there are um, only a small amount of children participating, this is actually what we consider one of the high need classes. It's very specific. Um, and it's something that for these um, young people, uh, one of the very few um, codes that they can fully participate in, completely supported and surrounded by qualified coaches and volunteers. And so we have made a recommendation of $500 to help pay for their training costs. The next ones are a whole heap of schools, and you will mainly primary schools, so you will see Kangaroo, Monganui, Nātaki, Taipa and Te Hapua. Please note that Nātaki and Te Hapua, the application is completed by the same person because they share a principal. Um, and so they're all, all in one way or another, going to the same events. Um, all of the other events that they apply for have passed. And if they have not passed, then they're at the point where they will not be included in the primary school sports calendar. The only one that they can possibly attend now is the Matariki Festival. I have contacted the organiser, which is Tararawa, and spoken with their lead organiser, Paulette Montino. Paulette, at currently this event was scheduled for the end of Term 2. Um, she is trying her best to reschedule that for Term 3, um, obviously waiting to ensure that she has all of her COVID um, guidelines um, ticked off. Should that event um, happen in Term 3, all of these schools have indicated that they would like to send um, participants to that one event because they can't go to any of the others now. So for Kaingaroo School who want to send a good 80 children, that is um, the cost to get to that, to that Matariki event in Taipa is $150. Um, similarly for Monganui, they have more children to send as part and they're getting 500 and Nātaki and Te Hapua 215 and 420. The only school that's a little bit different there is Taipa Area School. They want to send um, their children to um, events in Taipa. They want to send teams to the Monganui Netball Centre competitions. Um, in term three, when that happens. And they also want to send teams to the Kaitai Basketball Association competition, which originally was going to be in term two, and is scheduled for term three, again, subject to the gymnasium at um, Aniwaniwa being opened up again so that they can use it. So their application for $500 is a Kiwi sport application to support grassroots sport. So. Once those are all added up, it comes to $7,185. That does leave us $2,183.10 left over, which we hope then can be passed over to the next funding round and included in that. Okay, push the button, Leslie, get rid of that button. So those are the Sport Northland recommendations for the Rural Travel Fund. Do you have any questions? Whew. Um, Madam Chair, I, think, I don't know what she's on, but um, I just want to say very comprehensive as always, Leslie. <laughs> um, so yeah, I think it speaks for itself. Yeah, um, here's Adele here. She's just on the phone. Uh, through the chair, this is Catherine. I just might add in, we do have a supplementary recommendation on there so that if things do change, it means that we can 
adjust things on the fly rather than having to come back to you and wait another month or six weeks for a decision if if things fall over. I'm happy to move the current recommendation. I'll second it. Sorry, can I just suggest um, Anna Dow's absence while she's on the phone that the deputy chairperson help lead the discussion? He's yeah, not here. It's oh, Laurie. It's Laurie. Oh, it was too. So, sorry about up. that, guys. The phone went and it's all to do with my internet or my fire that's happening tomorrow. So I had to talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so where are we up to? So it's been. Um, It's been, uh, it's all leads, you, it, do I just need to go through the list now, do I? That's correct, it's been moved and seconded. Okay, that's fine. Okay, Member X. Yes, I'm happy with it. Member Bainbridge. Yes. Member Brown. Yes, happy. Councillor Hoy. Yes, in favour. And Member Stewart. Yep. And I'm happy as well. Thank you, guys. Um, uh, I'd just like to say one more thing, um, just to let you know um, that uh, just currently, Sport Northern is currently working with um, clubs and codes and associations to help them with all their return to sport plans, just so that you know what's going on out in the community. Um, some codes and organisations are ahead of others. And so there would be a gradual rollout of sport hopefully coming back within the community in term three. Um, and it, obviously it will all, all look incredibly different than what it used to. Um, and so in, in my role with Sport Northland, our, my part is just about to support those organisations so that they can get kids and adults back onto the um, fields and courts and participating again. Um, one of the other things I'd just like to mention too is I would like to say um, comment on Member Brown's report in regard to the Kuroda Street toilets and the opening of the domain courts in Ahipara. Um, uh, we just like to say we um, acknowledge, and I know Jackie did this in her speech, acknowledge those people who worked tirelessly for those three years to get us that facility at the court and at the um, park. And it was just a shame that you couldn't be there and that we just wanted an opportunity to open those courts as soon as possible before Christmas. Same with the toilets, because the, um, the need for that was actually really huge over that holiday period. So I'd just like to acknowledge those who helped in the background to get that done. And thank you to Jackie for being on call to be my um, representative of the community board um, so that there was that face there at those mm -hmm. openings. And we really appreciate that. That was excellent. So apart from that, thank you very much. And hopefully we'll catch up with you again soon. And um, that's me. Yeah. Thank you so thank much, you. Leslie. Yeah. Bye. And thank you. Um, Madam Chair, before Leslie goes, um, can I just Leslie. ask if she can um, give feedback on the Tehiku Master Plan? Because both Sport Northland and, you know, her role in Kororo part, you know, and Ahipara in general, um, I think that that will be really valuable to get that feedback as well. Mm. Yep, that sounds great. At the moment, we're working with um, a lot of our Sport Northland work at that level is done by my management staff. So we've got so we've got a person that's employed by Sport Northland. His name is Stuart Middleton. He's actually in charge of places and spaces for our organisation, and that's his role is to deal with that. And I hope that in regard to our community connector roles that we have here, which is me and Cheryl in the Mid North, that we're able just to, to give that local voice um, to those to those discussions so that people know what's going happening down at that grassroots level. One of the other things that we're doing too, just in part of my work, is hopefully working with the Ahipara community because that's one of my targeted communities and helping them move forward with some more projects. And, I'm, and we're like in discussion there around some wish lists that the community have put together. And we had looked to review the Ahipara community plan um, and also to, to say, see how we can make that work and provide some feedback to um, community board and to council around some of those things that are happening in this area. And a lot of that 
with my input uh, with Sport Northland's influence is all around sport, recreation and play. So anything that sort of has that kaupapa or a health kaupapa is something that Sport Northland can support. So if you have anything like that floating around in some of your other areas that you need some support with, please give me a yell. I'd be more than happy to come and have a call at all with you and your community. Thank you so much, Leslie, for that. That's great. So we shall move on to the next item, which is 7.8, which is a Rural Travel Funding Projects report on page 138. So I, I shall move that. Do I have a seconder, please? Yep, I'll second it. Thank you, Jackie. So everybody happy with this, the, these reports? Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll go through the list. Member Axe? Yes. Member Bainbridge? Yes. Member Brown? Yes. Councillor Foy? Yes. Member Stewart? Yes. And and I also agree. So we shall move on to the, the next, um, it's 7.9, which is our statement community board fund account as at the 30th of April. On page 150. So I've just got a comment here, um, and I hope Catherine is still on board. She left. No, no, I am here. Sorry, I had to take myself off mute so you knew I was here, but I am still here. Okay, um, there is a comment here that um, I made a note of on this. I've just got to find the note now. So in your report on the funding applications on page 50, you say that there's 39,420 left. Yes. Well, on this particular page, page 152, um, the statement says 43,021.96. So there's a difference of 360196. So what's it going to be? I based it on the last funding report I did, so I don't know what the difference is. Okay, so when I, I haven't, well, I haven't seen the financial report because I don't, that's not something that I actually deal with. So I can only base it off the last information I had, which was where I took the amount that you had at the last meeting and what you granted, and that's the figure that I have. So I don't know what that the difference is. Oh, okay. So really, it's it's the um, the forty three would probably be the the better amount to. Kim, are you able to find out, please, whether that's the right amount? Uh, through the chair, I'm just having a look now at both items for you. You are probably better off to go with the amount that is in the community, the statement of the community board fund. So that $43,021.96 minus the amount that you just allocated will be your balance. Which is 16799 What is it? 16799 is what you have allocated today. Okay. So it's 22,621, is that correct? What we've got left? That's balance? based on the 39,000 figure. So is that correct, Catherine, or is it not 22, is it? You'll need to ask him because I, I can only go on the figures that I have, so I don't actually see your um, funding breakdown from accounts. <laughs> Sorry, Catherine, how much was just allocated? $16,000. $799. Okay. 
So that would leave you $26,222.96. Okay, so are we allowed to allocate that amount, please, to different projects, the, the remaining money? You are only allowed to allocate $20,000 uh, based on the current policy. And the balance, my understanding is there has been discussion that you will be allowed to carry it over to the next financial year. So we'll Thank be carrying you. We can go outside of policy if we want. That's just the policy. We can go outside of policy um, yes, if we include that in our, in our motion. So, Madam Chair, if I could just, um, our Chief Financial Officer has confirmed that due to COVID-19 and the impact that that's had on your ability to allocate grants, any surplus funding will be rolled over to be allocated in the new financial year. Um, you do have the ability to allocate projects to specific, or allocate funding to specific projects um, that have already been identified and adopted by yourselves through your strategic plan process. Mm -hmm. So it's up to you whether or not you wanted to so we allocate can... funds or to leave it to the new financial year to add to your post-COVID grant allocation availability. Madam Chair, and I've already asked this, I've got grab asking questions in the chat from Asia. Um, um, and um, AU was really helpful with this. You sent through the on the 1st of October 2019, we had a motion that relates, someone's got background noise, relates to um, our placemaking fund allocation. And so it said that we gave it 33,333 to Awanui um, Reserve. Um, so further to that, it had, um, sorry, I'm just trying to read this here. A, you might be able to help me here. Um, oh, yeah, allocates X amount of funds from the board's community towards the Centennial Park placemaking project for Kaitai as identified in the Teku Community Board Strategic Plan. Um, so that's, I'm just reading this from um, what A has sent to me, if A is there to comment. She there? Hi, Aya. <laughs> Need to unmute. You are mute, Aya. You're still on mute. <laughs> so. Aya is unmuted, but it seems she's having some issues with her microphone. Yeah, so we can't hear anything that you're saying, Aya, but I can see that you are unmuted. Aya, do you want me to call you on Skype and transfer the message through? So just while Catherine's doing that, um, and I just wanted to highlight to the rest of the board that over, um, there was a very short period to do the shovel ready applications. And um, we all know that the KBA, um, you know, gave money towards it, and so did our community board for, um, for Dalwin to do a master plan for the Kaitai area. Um, because we've seen the opportunity to get much more funding than that, um, Dowin included in the master plan much more than just Kaitai. Um, so for those that have seen Kaura. it, included um, Ahipara and Awanui in Can particular. Um, and um, we should be hearing back about that application for that funding um, from central government for Shovel Ready within the next mm -hmm couple of weeks, hopefully. Um, but I just wanted to highlight to you that um, Dowen did do this ex extra work on the on the master plan and um, 
and in terms of the work that she did in particular about Awanui Reserve Design that was done with um, and Susie Clark um, and the Awanui Progressive Group had input into that. Um, and so um, I just wanted to, you know, let you know that in terms of the funding and um, potentially addressing the extra work that Darwin had done for those additional areas that hopefully will get us significantly more money um, in Taku as a result of her work over those eight days. Can you guys hear me now through the headset? Yes. yes. Okay, Cole, I'll hang, hang up, up on you, Catherine. Okay. <laughs> uh, so I sent the link to the meeting resolution through the chat. Um, so on the 1st of October, the Tehiku Community Board voted to allocate the placemaking fund um, as Councillor Foy outlined. So there was allocated the, the full amount of the placemaking fund to Awanui and then 2,500 to the Kari Kari Recreation Hub project, um, 500 for ANZAC expenses. I don't know whether that was still used towards the video and 17,000 to the Centennial Park planting subject to a variation approval of the town maintenance contract for the ongoing maintenance of the plants. Uh, so does, does that answer the questions that people had about the strategic allocation of the community board fund? Yes, yes. I'm, I, I mean, I was at that meeting, so but there's quite a few members that who are new who wouldn't have known about things. So, so that's yeah. That's, yeah. It yeah. was prior to the election, but after the start of the new financial year, eh? So it was in this yeah. current financial year that we're still in now. That's right. Yeah. So the ANZAC um, day service expenses for $500 hasn't been used. And um, so if we can transfer that amount over, that would be really good because I know that um, Member Axe's department or area up in, in um, the far north, they were asking for some money towards ANZAC day um, as well. So possibly um, we could, um, Get, allocate or transfer that $500 over so that it goes forward and then that'll be um, and we could probably put some more aside for member access area for ANZAC Day. We can have that discussions at our strategic, uh, our strategic plan uh, workshop or next one I should say. So how does everyone feel about that? Sorry, Dale, just to clarify, are you saying you're just talking about the five hundred dollars now? Yeah, just just I'm just I'm just pulling that that piece out so that everyone knows that we haven't used it. So, so what's going to happen with the twenty six thousand? I'm I'm so, kind of lost in all of this. The twenty six thousand. So um, we need to have a discussion on that as to where we can allocate some mm -hmm. of this money. If we need to allocate it. Is that right? Like, like, like allocated, I should say. Yeah. So, because for me, um, we were unable to complete getting an application together because we couldn't get any quotes done during the COVID lockdown. No one would respond. Um, and I'm just wondering if there are going to be other applications from people who are in similar situations. And I think we should defer any decision about using those funds. Um, until after our next meeting to give those groups that were affected by COVID and unable to submit their applications the opportunity to put them in. Um, yeah, that's my personal thought of it, that we should hold on to it and then make a decision after our next meeting. Jackie, we can't allocate um, <coughs> anything. I mean, the, we roll over into a new financial year, so all your groups, uh, any group can can apply to our grant yes. fund. So that's not going to um, stop that happening. So that's not going to hinder them in any way whatsoever. Okay, yeah, I, I understand that, but I'm just wondering whether or not we'll, we'll get a glut. That's all, I don't know. 
um, whether we we're going to get like groups that would have applied in that in the last three months period now applying then and then it's just going to we're going to run out of money by the end of our our year our end of our period if we just go with the original amount um yeah or as are you do you have a project in mind that you are thinking of reallocating that twenty six thousand to Hello. Hmm. Hello, Darren. You've got your hand up. Y yes, uh, Adele. I just wasn't quite sure. I I didn't know anything about this 500 for for the ANZAC um thing things, and I'm sort of thinking along the lines of Jackie and just let it let it lay there for now, maybe. Well, I was suggesting that the five hundred dollars actually, which isn't actually included in the um, in the twenty six thousand, it's already included um, that it hasn't been uplifted yet. That that be rolled through, so it, it actually adds on to the five to the twenty six two two two. So if you add it on the five hundred there, it makes it up to twenty six. 722. That's what I'm trying to trying to establish. If you see where I'm where I'm coming from, because we haven't it's used. Right. If you're looking at a statement now, that should be in front of you. You'll see where it is at the bottom there. That five hundred dollars. So through the chair, just because it hasn't actually been uplifted, they have included it as yes. already allocated. So it is already there. So yeah. all we would need to do is reallocate it to Hohora. So it will roll over and then come your next resolution, you'll be able to allocate it to someone else. But it is actually already in the budget as part of that 22,000. Yes, yeah, I realize. Yeah, I know that. But what I mean is it's included in another figure of 68824. Yep, but that's the amount that has been allocated, but not uplifted. So it's already been allocated. It's just that the funds haven't been uplifted. Yeah. So that'll just roll over. That's what I'm trying to establish. That's correct. Yeah, it will just roll oh, that's over. Okay. That's what I was asking. So um, did anyone have any other, um, did any ideas of, of whether you'd like to, um, Allocate any of this 26222 to anything before the end of the financial rolls over, financial year rolls over. So, can I hear from someone, please? Um, Madam Chair, I can speak, but I can see, is it Aya wants, did you want to talk? I, she's got her hand up first. Oh, oh, there's two people with their hand up, I think. Uh, yeah, Madam Chair, is it okay to offer some advice based on the policy? So, the the 2019 1st of October meeting, you guys allocated the full amount of the placemaking fund and the $20,000 strategic allocation, the Tehiku Community Board that held office at that time, allocated the full amount that's able to be allocated as a strategic allocation. So that's already been done for this financial year, but you'll have another opportunity to do that when the new financial year begins and uh, less than a month to go until then now. We, but um, just make it clear, we can allocate to a project that's in our strategic plan if we've got monies left over before the end of the financial year. Uh, and yeah, that would, you did that at the beginning of this financial year. So you've already done that for the current financial year, but you'll have a new sum to allocate in the new financial year. So just touching on the point that Councillor Foy made, so you can allocate up to $20,000 on strategic or projects identified in your strategic plan. Um, they're in, and then touching on what A has said is that there is a cap on that of $20,000 in the existing policy. So going back to the point that Councillor Foy made is that you can make a decision outside of policy. So you can agree to to allocate more than 20,000 if you wanted to, but you have to have a strong rationale of why you're doing that. Um, Madam Chair? Yes. He's here? Yes. Um, oh, I, I think Darren wanted to speak because he's got his hand up. <laughs> did, did you want to speak first? Is that your hand, Darren? Oh, so, sorry, no, I've, I, I'll take it down. I've spoken, sorry. 
<laughs> I'll, I'll lower my hand, sorry. Um, sorry, um, so I just wanted to speak to this because the reason that we're able to, in, in this board, um, since we've decided to t take more of a strategic approach with forward planning our spaces and then allocating budget is that our, co our community board has allocated funds to do the forward planning design and then, you know, we've had that work done in advance in order to take advantage of that. And the clear example there is JC Park um, and what we've done with the Tehiku Master Plan as well. And it just shows opportunities that you get if you take those. So I personally would like to see this money allocated to do that for planning for um, other spaces. So we've already allocated 33,000 for Amanui, um, but that was for placemaking. Um, and because we'd done that, that meant that we, could, we went and applied for TIP. You know, and so if we're choosing Awanui, then we could, we've got that as an option put for the money there for, for planning of Awanui. But we've also got Kuruta Park at Ahipara, and also um, Member Stewart has highlighted the Hohora Pukanui area for a walkways opportunity. So um, because we, that's a significant amount of money, maybe we could allocate half to um, the Hohora walkway for planning and maybe half to, I don't know, the, the Ahipara Kuruta Park forward planning. I don't know. Um, I just wanted to put that out there um, as a suggestion. Oh, and Catherine's got her hand up. <laughs> Sorry, I, I didn't want to interrupt there, but if I may. Um, the one thing that I'm finding from the community feedback I'm getting at the moment is a lot of people have held off their applications purely because they couldn't do anything during COVID-19. I'm really not going to be surprised if the community boards get a lot more applications that they may not have seen in the past purely because our community groups have lost most of their funding options that they may have gone to before because there's so much in there. So. Yes, you can allocate everything. I mean, heck, I'm not stopping you from doing that, but I am making the point that I'm expecting you guys to get a lot more applications that you wouldn't have had before, and that's going to make things a lot tighter in our community. Um, a lot of ones who, for example, would have relied on pokey grant funds in the past, the pokey's organisations have already said, look, we haven't had any funding for three months. We're not expecting to get much for the next few months. So there's going to be a lot more groups looking for OPEX and CAPEX that weren't looking for it before from us. So it's just something to consider in there. I mean, I don't want to make a personal recommendation because that's not what I'm supposed to do. But um, it might be something to consider in terms of um, whether you allocate that money now so then it's not available or whether you can still allocate it in the new financial year and have a little bit of a, a buffer there for the community groups that will be coming through. So the reality is they'll be coming sooner or later anyway, so. Yeah, but I'm expecting a lot more through because other funding areas that they would have gone to previously, Cheryl, are just not there and have already um, indicated that they're getting um, huge amounts more than they would have in the past in terms of applications. Um, thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you to the staff for raising those issues. I just wanted to reiterate my point, and I remain clear that this is why our board has gotten ahead. This is why our area has done well in terms of our board planning. We have used our community board budgets to, you know, get those specialist people to spatially plan and cost these areas um, to do the forward consultation. Um, and we get an exponential um, return for for our um, for our investment. So um, that's that's my own personal view, and I would love to see our Tehiku area and our community board continue to do well, and continue to board plan so that we can slide that across the desk to, for example, the regional council for a walking and cycling strategy, to farmers holdings, um, to even to. Um, allocate funding within the new long-term plan, which is coming up um, not this year, but next year. So the only way we can do that is to do forward planning. And 
we are lucky enough in our community board to have this discretionary fund in order to allow for that. So um, I think that um, personally, I, that's that's what I would like to see. Um, and um, if the if the other members would like to comment on that and areas that they would like to see for planning being done, um, and um, and where, where they think that we can capitalise on that best. So I will, um, I would like to allocate some funding for the forward planning out of this um, leftover money um, to Karora Park, to forward plan on Karora Park, um, the Hohora Kokonui track, uh, or tracks I should say, um, and also possibly the um, Awanui. Um, so do we have a plan for Awanui apart from the Tahuku revitalisation plan, Felicity? Um, they've done part of it, but I think that yeah. more outside of just the park, I think would be really advantageous. Because we've started already and it would be good to see this through this particular park and um, it, I mean 33,000 really isn't just going to cut the mustard on this park so we really need a little bit more funding to to um, place make it properly if you know what I mean or do a master plan for it would that be the forward planning that you're looking for Madam Chair I think that Kim wants to speak as well Sorry, through the chair. I was just going to say, while I think you're on the right track with your forward planning and agreeing to allocate the funds, this is the one year that you don't actually need to do that right here and right now. So because it's been agreed that the funds can be rolled over into your next year's budget, you could then go away and get some informed information and actual numbers on what you're wanting to allocate towards instead of kind of just it feels a bit like you're making up an amount on the spot as opposed to actually having that clarified information beside you or in front of you. Yes I, I totally agree with that and um, so as long as we're not going to lose it um, and not go outside we can go outside the 20 because we've got that those extra funds. That's what I'm sort of wanting to know as well. That's correct. The due policy. to COVID, yeah, due to COVID nineteen, this is the one year that you don't have to worry about allocating that twenty two thousand that is left over because it will roll roll over into your twenty twenty one budget, and you will be able to allocate it, and you will still be able to make those out of policy decisions at the beginning oh, of this financial great. year. So is everybody happy with that? So maybe just to clarify for your new members, so in, an, in normal circumstances, if you don't allocate your full budget, it gets lost. So you can't just roll over month by month and financial year by financial year, all of your budgets. But because of the circumstances that we're in at the moment, you have been allowed to do so. Okay. So Darren, you wanted to speak. No, no, I was just giving the thumbs up for that other one. Oh, okay, that's okay. Sorry. Okay, so we, we're all, all going to agree to transfer the funds over. Is that what I'm hearing? Um, Through the chair, you don't even need to agree to that. It's just going to happen for you. Okay. So, Felicity. Um, I think Aya wants to speak, but um, also I wanted to hear back from the board if they did feel that doing forward planning you know was something that they supported um, and just have a think about the areas that they wanted to do it um, and what that consisted of because when we do our forward planning remember that we want to be targeting certain buckets of money we're going to be forward planning for you know we don't forward planning for the sake of what we're forward planning to do xyz 
um, so that we can turn our whatever it is, 20,000 into 200,000 or 2 million, you know. Through you, Madam Chair, I think it's a really good idea, Felicity, the forward planning part of it. I just I also agree with, um, I don't know who spoke previously, uh, but it was um, that I just think we need to have a, a plan of that. You know what I mean? Like we just, you can sort of say, oh, I'm going to throw 20,000 at that, but that may, might not be what we need. So I think we need to have a, well, that's kind of as part of our strategic planning session. When we do have one or you know, another one. You know, do we, we need to plan yes. these? these projects and stuff like that, don't we? Yes. Um, to make sure that we, you know, and we know what it's going to roughly cost or what we're going to allocate towards it. So, yeah, I'll be keen on that. Okay, so that's that's um, all good discussion. Thank you, everybody. Um, so, I want to say that I support forward planning too, but I also acknowledge that we've got a, a valuable institution here already in the Monganui Information Centre and I'd like that supported too um, because tourism is going to be very important, domestic tourism for the next little while for a start off and we need to be promoting our area. Perhaps I can do a funding application to our board, um, Cheryl please. I'll wait and see first whether the council decide to support them because info centres really are a council activity. So we should know that hopefully. When are you having your deliberations? Friday. Oh, oh yeah, so we'll know next week. Yeah. Thank you. Unmute Adele. So did we have a mover and a seconder for the... Um... Through the chair, no, no, we haven't had a mover or a seconder yet. Move the report. Pardon? I'll move it. Okay. Who's going to second it? I'll, I'll second it, Adele, Darren. Okay, thank you. So we'll just go through. Uh, Member Bainbridge, Member uh, Brown. Member X. Yep. Councillor Foy. Support. Member Stewart. Yeah. And Member Brown. Yeah. And I support as well. Thank you. Now we're up to. Hey, uh, 8.1, which is page 153, which is the Tahuku Statement of Financial Performance Activities by Ward for the period ending 31st of March 2020. Move. I'll second it. So, Member X. Yes. Jack. Member Brown? Yes. Councillor Foy? Yes. Member Stewart? Yes. So all in favour? Thank you. So we're up to the next one, 8.2, to Hiku Community Hall Annual Information Update. So we can have a discussion on this one as well. It's on page 156. So I'm a little bit um, 
So in the Tehiku ward, we've had um, reports from Monganui and Kaingaroa and the Awanui Sports Complex. We haven't heard from Hirakino, Watafifi, Lake Ohia. Yeah, um, Madam Chair, I've been yeah. trying to, how do we find out who the per contact people are for these? Maybe I've okay. missed something. The Hirakino one is Sharon Adams and she works at the Age office. Sharon Adams, yep. yeah. The Still at the Age? I didn't think the Age, I think our Age has only got like two people left, haven't they? Yeah, she's one of them. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Apparently. Right, I'll pop in and see you then. Um, yeah. yeah. So, sorry. Sorry, off you go. The Awanui is not even mentioned in our Hiku Ward halls. No. <laughs> that was just something. Yeah, so I've got that noted. Yeah. And also, um, Broadwood is in our area. So you let, that needs to be taken out. Mm -hmm. And Takahui does exist. The Takahui yeah. Hall. And I'm not sure why Victoria Valley's been left out. Because that's still operating. Mm. So, yeah. There needs to be a sort of an update. It's not a very good report when all these things have been left out. And, and um, I guess it's just telling us who has... Um, been giving us their reports from their meetings, I guess, and where they're at. But Lake O'Hare is still an issue. Um, I'm not quite sure when that meeting's going to be. I need the staff to work with that, that community and get back to me about that. Now that we're sort of coming out of COVID, they could possibly set something up, possibly next month, maybe. So we can get on and... and um, Talk with that community. Madam Chair. Yes. Um, um, I just wanted to speak to this, if, if it's okay. Yes, certainly. Um, so I've already raised this previously about our halls. Um, what this um, report is lacking is showing the huge amount of depreciation collected per hall. For example, Awanui has $1.5 million. And I don't know how much it is for Hirakino or Lake Ohia. I think it was a couple hundred thousand. Um, so the report doesn't really give us context about how much these calls, um, these halls are costing us in depreciation, let alone operational costs to our ratepayer. And seen as halls are paid at a, through our wood rate, that means that people in our Taku ward are paying for these halls um, and all the costs to run them. And the way we're currently operating is in a vacuum, as if these these buildings aren't having a financial implication on us when they are. But it's just we have we don't have that information in order to be transparent to our ratepayer that at the end of the day is paying for um, these these buildings. Um, and it's apparent that a lot of them aren't being used very much, um, which is reflective in the fact that we're not even getting a whole report back. And um, um, when we look at the actual numbers of people being used, um, using these facilities, are we getting good value for money? Um, and I think that's a really relevant question that, um, that people need to answer because times have changed. People don't have Friday dances every night in their halls um, because they now have cars and they go to service centres like Chiahu or um, so I know that this item here is about um, receiving a report about the annual information update but I feel that the current recommendation needs to be expanded to ensure that the staff are doing work so that we can actually do something about this instead of just ignoring it for another three years 
um, when we've made it very clear to the staff that we need to have this information and we need to do a public um, assessment about what is going to happen to all of these buildings that are being used by five people every year and are costing us, who knows, $100,000 a year for five people to use it. I agree with um, Felicity. The Monganui Hall is widely used and constantly used, but um, some of the other halls are hardly ever used at all. And I agree that we haven't got enough information. So through the chair, that is the point of this report, is to get you that information. It's not necessarily so that you can then um, go on and make a further decision. Don't get me wrong. I can realise and understand why you would want to do that. Um, however, your best request for that would be through the CEO's, CEO's office, not necessarily, and a request for a report or a workshop, not necessarily through this amendment. This is just to say, yep, we now have this information, we now have the numbers, we can see which halls are being used, which halls aren't being used, which halls are working with council and providing them the information as requested. Yes, I, this is something that I actually highlighted in my report as well about around the halls. So um, there, it, it's got to be work in progress over the next year or so. I really like some traction on this, and I have. I'll request a report coming to the board, um, one of our meetings, with all that information that um, Felicity was talking about. So we really need to get on, onto this on behalf of our ratepayer as well. Um, so, Madam Chair, do we need to um, set out like a scoping document that we would like what we want, or is there a standardised report for things like halls? Um, Councillor Foy touched on a few things um, and seems to be in a good position to to provide us some guidance on this, maybe uh, on what we need to have what we need to receive because yeah I'm totally with you um, Felicity this the whole thing has comes up all the time for me um, people say well why don't they sign marae well what's the, what's the difference we marae probably get more use than all and yet we don't, don't see any council funding for you know, blah, blah, you know you give this you know you get this out in the in the, in the street so to speak um, so it, I would really like a um, not not you know not with a view to closing halls or anything like that but let's have a good look at this um, yeah, and not let it drift on. Um, so do you want us to submit things to you, Adele, and saying what we would like to see in this report? Or oh, definitely. Yeah. Yep. Yes, okay. definitely. Right, because I was having a look through that um, the, the attached document of um, yeah, the colourful one that's in there. My God, it's a lot. It's a lot to read in there, and there's a lot of um, things to think about, and particularly with the the whole the whole strategy that we have as well as and what the intention is of why we have halls and is that going to be reviewed you know it's, it's just a lot to think about so um if you can set a time frame for it that you want something in to you um we'll definitely I'll, I'll definitely be contributing towards what i think we need to see um and anyone else i suppose so we'll set up a um a strategic plan meeting our workshop i should mm -hmm. say in the next month or so, and then we can sit down and, and bash it out and, and and request that type of report as to what we want to see in it, please. So okay. how does that work? Works for me. Good. So at the moment, we are really only receiving um, these three, I think it's three, re three reports in three different halls, so, um, <clears throat> yeah. So we just Madam go. Chair, I'd, I'd like to make an amendment to the motion. Um, motions are there to give direction to staff. Um, and um, the current recommendation is to just receive the report. So that can be A, and then B, I'd like to move an amendment. Um, that reflects what we've discussed here, that um, a report on the halls and its costs to 
um, and its cost per haul um, and, and accumulated um, depreciation costs um, are provided to the community board within within a, a certain duration because we've been waiting for this report for some time. Well, um, it's still the next meeting, can't it? Or is that too far away? I'm, I'm happy with the next meeting. If, um, yeah. Report to the next meeting with the information. Mm. Through the chair, it would surprise me, and I don't want to set yourselves up to fail, but it would surprise me if it did make the agenda of the next community board. Um, and I realise you have requested this several times previously, so. Well, if we make a motion and then the CEO office can respond to it, um, it's just that motions are there to be to give clear direction to staff. That's why the Local Government Act outlines motions as the direction from elected members. So I wanted to include this in the motion. Um, um, so I'm happy to say within three months that gives the staff more than adequate time um, to even um, Exceed our expectations. <laughs> We're just the next meeting, please. Uh, through the chair, it's scheduled for the 14th of July. Oh, yeah. So, shall I say, so Felicity, if you'd like to um, update the, the recommendation, and I would like to think that by the August meeting that we would have something in place from the staff. That gives them um, two cycles, practically. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy to say within three months. Um, that's June, July, or oh, within two months, say within two months. So not the next meeting, but the meeting after that. I think it's the end of August or whenever it is. <laughs> And through Madam Chair, and it would need to um, have tidied up the fact that we have other halls, and you know that the report in itself has got some significant, well, it's got some gaps in here that things like moving the Broadwood Hall, that there is the Takui Hall, um, and stuff like that. That uh, yeah. and anything else that might have been missed or overstated. So why would you be surprised if it can't come to the July meeting? Just asking. Uh, through the chair, so the information that you're requesting on depreciation, etc., is quite a lot of information, and I'm. It would take staff time and a, then approval for it to get through the report process for that to happen. So by the time you gather it and then write the report and send it through the approval process, it's probably not likely that you would get a sufficient report in for the next meeting. Whereas if you give us a little bit more time, as Felicity has said, for that three months, then we can get you as much information as possible. So the August meeting, I think, is on the 25th of August. Just looking at my, my diary. So Madam Chair, Aisha here, if I could just add. So um, I understand the board's frustration and push for urgency. Um, the board is quite able to put in their amendment, um, which has been moved, but we don't have a seconder yet to actually be discussing it yet. So, um, but we could put in the amendment that you want this information for the next meeting. I guess we're just trying to manage your expectations and make it clear that that's not probably going to be feasible, particularly with um, information um, regarding the financials and in our early plan adoption phase and setting of the new rates and issuing all of our rates notices and things. So there's some significant work already being undertaken by the team that would be required to provide this information. But if you request it for your next meeting and we can't provide it, then we will just say so and bring it to the next available meeting. No, Felicity's happy with three months, that's okay. My hall's all good. <laughs> yeah. So but if we've got a seconder for that motion, then we can I'll carry it. on and yep. And I can second it. I so Felicity, would you like to read your recommendation, please? Um, unfortunately, I had to come out from my PC, so I'm only looking at my iPad here, so stick with me here. Um, um, receive the report update. Um, and then B, um, re request 
council provides a um, so on the, the wording that Felicity um, read out before I've typed up and sent through to come in a chat message so she might just be able to copy and paste that and then you can let us know whether or not that's what you're asking. Thank you. It's just on these iPads I can only, it's only a smaller screen than a PC so. Yeah. I'm just waiting for Kim to add the text. I wouldn't say accumulated depreciation cost per haul, per haul. Um, no, um, after that, no, you, you keep that one in there. Uh, it's cost per haul and accumulated depreciation cost per haul as well after depreciation cost per haul. Yeah. Um, I think as well, um, Kim, I think the motion needs to reflect that staff need to provide options um, for, um, for the ongoing, uh, for the ongoing use of the halls because some of them are really well used. Some of them are used by very extremely minimal people. The options for the ongoing. Yeah, great. So is everybody, um, so that, that, that's that recommendation sorted now, I'll just go through the list. So, Member Axe, do you agree? Yes. Member Bainbridge? Yes. Member Brown? Yes. Councillor Foy, you gave the recommendation. Yes. Member Stewart? Yes. And I agree as well. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. So we're now at the end, are we? Yeah. We are. So we're going to have a closing prayer. Unless someone else wants to do it, I do have one. Oh, then. Um, Madam Chair, I just wondered before you close your meeting whether or not Aya wanted to just speak with you quickly. Oh, okay, that's fine. And then Yaka, is that right? Through the chair, that's correct. We also have Yaka and Kushla to workshop with you at the end of this meeting. Can I say something too, for quickly? Yes. Oh, does anyone know? I've, I do. I use a phone, but I can't see the hand up in the chat thing on an iPhone. So that. Um, is, and John, the speak. hand up thing is only available on PC, unfortunately, until teams are upgraded more. Um, okay. So I can't see that on my iPad, but I can on my PC. Sorry. Hopefully, you won't need it again in a half. Also, um, what's the procedure? Um, yeah, sad to see Laurie, who's worked with the community board for so many years, having to stand down. But um, when is that public? And obviously, this is recorded. And also, what's the procedure that comes next? By election. Yep, so once we've received his formal resignation, um, we'd go through the process of notifying. Um, an extraordinary vacancy on the board and then we'd go through the by-election process. 
Okay, thank you. So, Aya, the floor is yours. Sorry, Darren's got his hand up. <laughs> oh, sorry, Darren. That's all right. I was just wondering, as a board, should we um, might maybe put our hands in their pockets and get Laurie something and send it to him? Might make him feel a little bit better. We definitely will. If, that, if and, everyone's in agreement. Yeah. And Aisha, can you find yeah. out from governance as well if, um, if that as well is going to be acknowledged because Laurie has given a huge, a, a gigantic um, contribution to um, to FNDC and in his long, um, long um, duration of service. Yeah, so I've I've sent a notification through to our CE office just to let them know that it's coming um, and said that it would be appropriate for us to do something to give them a better send off and suggested that maybe the board um, when we're back in a physical meeting could bring him along to a meeting just to have a bit of a lunch or a morning tea or something to thank him for his contribution over the years and wish him all the best in his health and future. Most definitely. Yeah. Thank you. Um, and Aisha, can you please um, ensure that the CEO is notified to attend that meeting as well? Because it's yeah, important. Definitely, we'll invite the mayor and councillors and senior staff. Thank you. So, are we going to close the meeting and then listen to Aya, or is Aya part of this meeting? Good question. <laughs> <laughs> I say start the meeting and then you can delete the recording. Yeah, it's up to Adele whether or not she wants to close. So we, then. Yeah, we can close and then I can have a chat to us. So we'll just do a closing um, prayer and then we'll close it formally and then we'll be informally. It won't be recorded after that. Yeah. Thank you. So, Jackie. Okay. Um, Kia. Kia tau ki a tātou katoa, te atawhai o tātou araki a hū kraiti. Me te aroha, me te atua, me te whuhinga tahitanga ki te wairua tapu, ake, 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 āmini. And Amen. translated as, May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Beautiful. Thank you, Jackie.